Hello, everybody, and welcome to episode two of the Moonlighters. Hello. Hello. Hi. I don't know why. Hello. It's because we just. It's because we just did a, a live D and D show at mm. Mag at Magic Fest. Where so when I was saying that, I was like, for some reason, expecting applause to happen, like in my room. Like, ma, yes, yeah, there we go. Yeah, the Moonlighters. Good answer. Good answer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> welcome everybody uh, to episode two of the the Moonlighters, which is starting on time, which is awesome uh, because uh, we were a little bit worried. Funko was doing uh, a sweet tournament today in which he did Heck amazing. Yeah, yeah, he did yeah. so good. Uh, how many? Uh, how many? Uh, you don't have to say it, but did you earn lots of dollar dues? We were not lost, which means we earned money. Hey, yeah. there you go. That's kind of all that matters, right? How many yeah. chickens did you dine on? Uh, well, let's not get into that. Uh, uh, chickens. We had fun. Thou dinest on. <laughs> how many thou chickens? <laughs> how many? The D spirit. Can That's you how you phrase that question right? as a D and D question. Yeah. Who? Whom did it of? <laughs> Chicken feast dinner Perfect. dinner. Uh, Funko, I'm rolling a D six. Wow, you got zero even on a D six. Okay, so zero. Yep, <laughs> yep that, that's accurate. <laughs> Uh, all right, besides roasting my players and whatnot, hello, everybody. Uh, this is the Moonlighters. This is a... So I keep saying bi-weekly, but that is not the correct term. I get uh, it's twice a week. Yeah, so fortnightly. Fortnightly. Yeah. yeah. The, the gamers. What's up, gamers? <laughs> okay, we found the gamer. <laughs> uh, so fortnightly. So the stream happens uh, every other Thursday. Um, and, uh, yeah, I'm really, really excited to be back. We had so much fun last time. This is just kind of a goofy thing we get to do, uh, every other Thursday. So I'm really pumped. I think we're going to have a lot of fun, um, before we kind of get into it and, uh, talk about what happened last time and all that kind of jazz. I would love for the players to introduce themselves and talk a little bit about what they do. You can even talk about your character and stuff like that in case uh, maybe a couple of people are coming in for the first time. Uh, so, uh, TQ, why don't you start us off? Hello, I'm TQ and I play Neoma. Neoma is a happy-go-lucky, just wants to make the world better, water genasi, um, storm sorceress who comes from a life at sea. And that's all you really know right now. Yeah, there's a lot etched in mystery and whatnot. Uh, Adam, what's your deal? <laughs> <laughs> all right. How long have we got? Yeah, you got an hour? Because, whoo, boy. Sure, right. why not? Why not? Uh, my name is Adam. Uh, I think I'm all right. Uh, yeah, I'm about a 5 out of 10. I'm oh, okay. Please put that on your business cards. Yeah. <laughs> All right. He's uh, all right. I am currently playing Oscar, who is the world's worst cleric, <laughs> and not like in like he's mechanic, like mechanically, but just his his disposition is he's not a hundred percent all behind it, and he did this because of circumstances in his life. Uh, I think I might actually do, or it would benefit us maybe just to do write ups on our character and post them somewhere. Yeah, I mean, definitely we can. If we want, we could even post character sheets if people cared or whichever. Website. We could do something like that. Website. Uh, oh, yeah. a website. Yeah, a website. But uh, yeah, I'm a streamer and I'm playing Oscar and he's a kind of a sad dad a little bit. And I love him. All right. Yeah. All right. Uh, Serge, why don't you uh, tell us a little about what you got going on there? Okay, you'll find it in the chat there. Uh, hey, my name is Serge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Go on. Go on, <laughs> tell me more. <laughs> I'm playing a character named Tully, uh, level one ranger. He's a young boy, a young, uh, a young street urchin who's had a tough life, but has heard that being an adventurer is his ticket out of it. So he's going to grow up to be the world's greatest adventurer. We're going like full shonen power fantasy here. Yeah. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I like coffee. I like Minecraft. I like w long walks on the beach and hiking. Uh, yeah. You like hiking? No, I used to, and then I started yeah. hanging out with Lur. Really why, why? Why would you? That was like the first. You didn't even like stand up for that. I was like, "Oh, you like hiking?" No, I just blatantly <laughs> lied to a bunch of people on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, last but not least, Funko. What's up, buddy? Hey, uh, I'm Funko. I'm a uh, 
disembodied Australian voice. Uh, I'm also a streamer, and I got three hours sleep last night because uh, yeah. I've been up since uh, midnight, basically. Uh, but I play Magna, who is a very straightforward business dwarf fighter, very business oriented. He's here to seek fame and fortune, uh, and uh, yeah, it's very direct. So kind of like me in a lot of ways. So yeah, it's uh, a lot of fun so far. Wait. Yeah. Cool. All cool. right. So there you go. These <laughs> Funko and Magnar, like the same person. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. So well, I mean, like most because it's Funko's first D and D character, right? Right. Correct? Yeah. Very true. true. Most, most people's my... first D and D character is just themselves. Yeah. This is my third game ever. Third session ever of D and D. So there you go. I think you've been That's... doing pretty great so far. That's interesting. Everyone's first D and D character is secretly themselves. Yeah. I, I think it's true. Yeah. That or oh, I yeah, pay it's... like I I, I, I hyperbolize. Yeah, like you hyperbolize yourself. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, it's uh, like you, but like cranked up to like an eleven. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. I can't even remember my first character. I don't either. I think I, I was, remember mine. I was very clearly a bard. I think. I was mine. Mm. Just... What was your first character, Adam? You said you remember yours. Uh, his name was Marcus. He was a cleric in Second Edition D anD. d Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. He was a homie. There you go. The ultimate homie. See, it's really weird because my first character was in the Rift system, and that system makes no sense whatsoever, and it's just like such a huge mess that. Oh, we found the hipster. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. After you drop the second edition, wow. <laughs> yeah, second edition's pretty old. It would have been better if you're like, oh, well, I don't really remember. We were playing GURPS at the time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. Let's uh, let me do some housekeeping, and then we're, we're, we'll roll on into the what happened last time. Uh, so, the Moonlighters is a D and D campaign that I run with my lovely streaming friends. Um, you should definitely go give them all a follow. Um, and one thing that I like to do uh, on the stream is because they are giving me their their time and 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 you know performing for you all. Uh, I like to pay them, but obviously I don't, I'm not swimming in dollar reduce and all that kind of jazz. So we kind of do this based on a tip system. Um, so essentially all bits that happen during this stream, uh, we split and we, I put them out to, uh, the, uh, the, the, the team and whatnot. So if you enjoyed the show, consider, uh, or if you, if something happens that you think is great, uh, just like, you know, in any, any stream, consider throwing in some bits and all that kind of jazz. Um, it, it, it helps, it helps me pay these lovely people. Um, and, uh, um, if you do do the bits, I believe there is still the mega cheer stuff. So you can unlock sweet, uh, emotes for, uh, people, the pride emotes and all that kind of jazz. So, uh, yeah, that's a, a great way to do those kind of things. Um, but, uh, but also make you don't know, don't feel obligated and whatnot we're just really really glad you're here and stuff like that but you know if you if you can feel f we we would appreciate it and that's that's all i like to kind of put it in there um other than that well okay i see that one uh, <laughs> i uh with that i i most of us uh, tend to i think all of us have turn off chat and whatnot during it uh just so that we can um uh, focus on the game and all that kind of jazz. So, I mean, if I'm doing the for those who are watching this on YouTube, all of this means absolutely nothing uh, <laughs> to you. But consider watching it live or something like that. Um, other than that, is there anything else I need to talk about, real quick? Serge, you're really good at making mental checklists with this kind of stuff. Any rules that we get wrong were house rules, and we meant to play them that way the entire time. Yes, the absolutely. Cameron Lauder rule. Yeah, 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 yeah. If I we... would like to invoke the louder rule. Yeah, the law, <laughs> the law of Cameron. The law, yeah. the law of louder. Yeah. yeah. Louder. Ah, there you go. All right. So, without further ado, that's our safe word, louder. Louder. Let's uh, let's shimmy on over to this. It's our main overlay. Uh, uh, right away, you can see that Adam was the only one who really took any major damage last time yeah, i was so oh. close to death i don't know why you would say that i forgot I viciously somebody wounded. hit me with a weapon and my life flashed before my eyes but i'm going to overcome it this is this is part of the heroic arc really mm -hmm. uh i forgot to turn off the sound on my notifications and i'll be uh, honest uh, i don't know how to do that without going through each and everything like i did last time so that is how you do it Unless yeah. you're hiding the entire notifications. Yeah. I still want them to show up, 
but now I feel better. All right, well, because I because I goofed, I'm gonna turn that off. But I, I hope you know we appreciate it. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna take a giant gulp of water and we're gonna do a recap because uh, this is some box text, as we like to say. Ooh. You're in the business. So, <clears throat> last time on Moonlighters, um, our heroes, or adventurers, I'm not really sure what we're going to call ourselves. Uh, let's go with people of interest. Our peoples of interest left the city of Neverwinter on a mission given to them by Rizagix, the leader of the Moonlighters. Uh, the mission? To find out what happened to a pair of adventurers who were originally sent out by Rizzo about three weeks ago to acquire a magical fruit from the Sunless Citadel. The Sunless Citadel. That is said to the fill those... Citadel? The Sunless Citadel. That is said to fill those who consume it with renewed vigor and life. And if they happen to find them and the fruit, then bonus. Sweet. They're about on the same level of importance, <laughs> I would say. Like, not, neither, neither is more important than the other. Uh, so the group passed through Oakhurst and met Garen, the barkeep of the Old Boar Inn, an inn with strangely no place to sleep, who gave them directions and told them that the siblings had indeed passed through town. The, the group arrived at the Sunless Citadel, situated deep in a ravine, where they traveled through the dark corridors until they came upon Meepo, a young kobold who told them of a rival goblin clan that stole his clan's pet dragon. The group agreed, half-heartedly, we'll say, <laughs> to, uh, to aid the kobold in exchange for being shown the way to his leader. Now, the group finds themselves in a large hall and sits down in front of them sits a short throne that stands near the west wall constructed of fallen bits of masonry that are kind of stacked against an old altar. And on the back of the or on the top of the altar sits a variety of small items. Uh, the portion of the altar that serves as the throne's back features a carving of a rearing dragon and a metallic key is held firmly in the dragon's open jaws. And upon this throne sits a kobold draped in a ragged white robe. And on each side of her, two kobolds holding sharp spears, wearing what looks to be rudimentary armor made of leather. And so the group, and you, you all enter following uh, behind Meepo because he was showing you the way before. And uh, as you enter the, the sight of... Uh, of this, of this, you know, very official-looking kobold, Meepo says, <clears throat> um, Most esteemed leader, Yidrasil! Yidrael! Yidrael! Meepo has found heroes who, who promised to get back Calcrix! And uh, the kobold sitting on the throne, who you assume is Yidrael, uh, looks over you and says, <clears throat> So another batch of heroes have come. What will happen to you, I wonder? I mean, what? nothing bad, I hope. What will happen to the other ones? Oh, they... <sighs> what did happen to them? I do remember seeing them, but I believe they went to fight the goblins and never returned. Uh, question. When you say group, uh, how many people were in that group? And were they siblings? I, I, she, she looks a little bit like, uh, like kind of kerfuffled at this question. I, I'm, I'm not sure how to tell you humans apart, really. But perhaps Fair. they may have shared some genealogy. But it was, no, so it was that, two honestly. people? There were two, yes. Sorry, Funko, go ahead. No, I was agreeing. I can't tell you people about either. I can't do it either, honestly. Yeah. Okay. No worries, Meepo. Thanks for the advice. I'm going to look at them and be like, a clue! We found their trail! Again! How long yeah. ago were they here? Hmm. Oh, I would say perhaps a, a few weeks ago. It's hard to tell when the light doesn't drum down here very often. And we've been distracted by certain things going on. Like what? Well, as, as Meepo has told you, those goblins, 
They took our precious Calcrix from us. And we miss her so. Okay. How about we find Calcrix and you help us find the two adventurers that went through here. And Yisrael kind of like leans back in her throne and like kind of look looks contemplative over this. The goblins did steal our dragon. I suppose. It's if worth you... it, Yisrael. I'm the future greatest adventurer king. Sure. Oh. You well in that case, Jeez. on the on the whims of this small whelp of a human, then obviously I should change Listen to me. I rule over the kobolds and you are in my domain. Let us say this. If you do return our dragon to us, I shall grant you a reward. And Meepo could accompany you if you desire. Ooh. We get to keep him? We get to keep him. We're not keeping the cobalt. Said, we can keep him. We're not we keeping we we him. Oscar, we can keep him. No, we have a child already. We don't we need We can anymore. keep him. You know I want to keep him. We're not keeping the cobalt. Really a lot of responsibility to have a pet, Neil. Well, oh, hey, okay. Let's trial the cobalt. See if he's any good. Yeah, if I don't have the responsibility, then I'll 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 give him up for adoption. You can't. He's got. He's a gun of soul. Meepo like, like yeah. Meepo looks up at you all and is like, Meepo can still hear you. Yeah, I know <laughs> Meepo. Do you want to come with me? You, I, Meepo just wants to see Calcrix again, and Meepo Meepo will do anything. Meepo will do anything to get her back. Okay. We I like the dedication. Let's go. I have some questions. Hmm. Uh. How did the goblins take the dragon? Oh, yeah. Hmm. Well, and Yisrael kind of looks a little bit ashamed. We have an ongoing battle between the two of us. And frequently we, we tend to raid one another's camps. But it's through, through, through the far door over there. And she points kind of down towards the hall. And you can see, like, there's sort of rudimentary barricades and whatnot to a, a door entrance and stuff. However, is that the same locked door we were at before, or is no, this a no, this door is a different door far okay, down. Just, just wanted to check that. Sorry to interrupt. But, but there is a secret passage into the back area, secret tunnel, where you can where you can sneak into perhaps a more secluded area of the goblin encampment, and Meepo could show you the way. I believe you have the key. Yes, Meepo? And Meepo goes, oh, yes! And, and Meepo produces, like, a small, like, rusty key ring from his loincloth, and you're not really sure where he's keeping it and whatnot, but he has the, the keys. And then, Me Meepo can show you the back way, and, and then we could get back Calcrix. I don't know that I want Meepo anymore. Yeah. Meepo's got a secret compartment. That's sweet. Uh, uh, we all have secret compartments. <laughs> um, Yzdras, how many goblins are there? Why, well, there is a whole clan, nearly, perhaps about the same, if not more, kobolds. As the kobolds. That's how words work. <laughs> Are we talking like 50 or like 100? Easily hundreds. Hmm. How much is it worth to you if we just took care of that for you? I, Magnar, I, you know, let's not make promises we can't. Hmm. And Israel kind of like, that is quite an offer. But the Look, dragon. My dad always told me, if you're good at something, never do it for free. That's all I'm saying. Mm, well, the dragon is the most important to us, but I would not say no to you destroying our enemies either. If you do find a way to destroy all the goblins, you will always be welcome here in the Sunless Citadel. And she kind of points to the key above her in the uh, the dragon's mouth. Perhaps we could show you. To the treasure coffers. Ooh. See? That's what's that's what's up. Uh all right. but we'll, I, uh, we'll see what we can do. Yes. Well, then Meepo will show you the way. You may rest here if you would like, but time is of most importance. Yes, small child. Name's Tully. <laughs> Hi, Tully. 
Nice to meet you, your majesty. I don't, uh, I don't care. <laughs> question. Uh, have you ever found, I don't know, just lying around or maybe growing down here, magical apple thingies? Well, yes. That's what they fight over. That's what they've been fighting over. The, the apples and the fruit are known to us. They, they come from the outcast who lives down below. He, he grows the fruit which he gives to the goblins. The dragon thieving goblins are his servants. Follow up question uh, How big is the dragon? Ah. She is a wormling. Oh, okay. So, so like a dog. I think it's like the size of a dog. Right? Slightly larger hound, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just picture Oscar like, so like, you know, like this? And then, yeah, and, and then she's like, mm, no, more. Uh, uh, mm, this, like a little bit uh, this, perhaps. You, you know, and, then, and then like she pushes your arms apart a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> as, we're, as we're talking about this, you see Tully's face drop because he was totally having this dream of like riding a totally sweet dragon out of the Sunless Citadel. Mm. The Sunless Citadel. Yeah. Like, I can't Someone, be a dragon rider. Maybe dragon, right? Mm-hmm. Maybe dragon. Okay, let's just recap really quick. There's a hundred goblins. Mm, give or take, our, yes. Uh, our two friends, or sorry, the two people who may or may not be the people we're looking for went in weeks ago. The fruits are in the hands of a weird person who is down below and is a lot allied with the goblins. And the dragon is a babo. Yes. I do not know what a babo me? means, but yes. <laughs> um, millennials. When Meepo, is the way you're taking us, is it anywhere near the mysterious person who grows the magical apples? Meepo, uh, like, look up and go, we, we do not know quite where, um, but no, you, you, need, you need to join, you need to journey through the goblins area. Oh, yeah, we're going to journey right through them. That... Okay. okay. Yeah. <laughs> that was a weird that was a weird thing to say. What? Yeah. I'm, I'm tapping my hammer as I say this, not yeah. my crook. <laughs> uh, okay. Mm. Yeah. So this is here's an interesting question. When you said you could rest here, is that like D D speak where we could take a short rest to heal thingies? Or so, yeah, so it's it's up to you, friends. Uh, she's she's offered this to you. Uh, a short rest is about an hour. Um, if you would like to have that. In that way, um, oh. Any sort I'm of... the only one that needs healing, and I would yeah. like to take a short rest to spend a hit die. That's what I was thinking about. My like one singular hit die. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we, we could eat, right? Like, Yeah, like I got I to gotta bandage up. Before we go into combat with the goblins, and before I write the tale of my first heroic adventure by slaying the goblin king, let's have a snack. Yeah, yeah. snack. David Bowie? Uh, so you... Like, write down everything that we know so we have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Eustrael nods and 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 she goes, Meepo can show you to the uh, to the to the rest area, Ooh. and uh, you are you are welcome to to eat what you will, but please be swift. We we do not know how long, Calcrix can last in the the clutches of the goblins. And Meepo goes, the goblins, they don't know how to take care of her. She likes to be scratched in a certain way. Who doesn't? Uh, yeah. Horrible. Um, Dragons love scritches. Yeah. It's known. It's so so Meepo kind of starts to walk a little bit down the hall and, and bids you to follow. And near the end of the hall, uh, there's kind of just like a, a, it's kind of like a little encampment. There's a um, a a fire that has like a cooking pot on it and some like bed rolls and stuff and various like benches and chairs that are clearly from have been worn down because they are from the original. Uh, Sunless Citadel before it, you know, collapsed and whatnot. So it's just like splintered wood and stuff. But it is serviceable uh, to to chill out here for a little bit. Cool. Uh, so cool. Oscar, you'd like to expend a hit dice? Yeah. Yeah, my one lonely hit die, please. All right. I'm gonna expend that bad boy. Uh, I gotta roll it, right? Yep. I rolled a one. Cool. Nice. That's one. <laughs> I'm, hit going to, I'm going to also expend my hit dice. Okay. Uh, I, is it, this, there should be, I yeah, also I guess. roll a one. At you, so you also add your constitution modifiers to it. So let me, uh, six. There. So I got three. Okay. So, uh, so I Oscar, got a one. you get, you get a three. 
Mm-hmm. Okay, and Tully, you got a one still? Yeah. Rough, rough, wow, rough. So con rough. modifier is zero. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, there, there it is. Uh, okay. So, I mean, there you go. I mean, seven is, is certainly better than being uh, at four. So, you, it's, it's not nothing. Um, all right. So, do you, do you, what do you friends do during this rest? It, it takes approximately, approximately about an hour for this to, to take place. I'm just chilling. I'm bandaging, doing my thing. I'll be, um, I have a, a notebook that I keep and I write down like where we've been and like note of who we've met and what they've said. And so I'm probably just writing out notes and I'm probably talking to Meepo and like realizing that he's not a pet and apologizing and like trying to talk to him like he's not a pet and being like, thanks for bringing us on this journey. I'm sorry. You're just really cute. I just really enjoy you. <laughs> Meepo, Meepo kind of nods and goes, "It is, it is okay." Um, me, but Meepo is intelligent and can can write and can can read, and and Meepo will make sure that he he brings you safely through through the goblins area because I'm, Meepo misses Calgrix so much. We'll help. Uh, Magar's eating and examining the stonework because uh, he's bored while he's eating. Great. Uh, now I don't know. It should say with your uh, with your characters, but do you regenerate any spell slots or anything like that from a short rest? It'll depend on the spell. But yeah. yeah. Have we used any spells? I don't, I don't think we've used any. I've only used cantrips, so I'm fine. Yeah. Also, fine. I didn't use a single spell. Mm -hmm. Oh, Oscar. okay. Then you're. I thought you used a healing spell, Oscar. No, he decided not, not to. Not That's why he ah, just had to rest. Ah, right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. That's why Tully's upset. <laughs> Yeah, so he almost died. All right, yeah, so it's like wizards, druids, and warlocks tend to. Everyone else follows this. Okay, yeah, so it's typically like a long rest and stuff. Uh, all right, so after you've rested a little bit, uh, Meepo stands up and goes, it, it is time. Meepo will show you the way? Please. Yeah, let's do let's this. Do it. Okay, so uh, Meepo leads you actually back uh, the way you originally came through. So back to the room where you found him. Uh, and in the, um, I guess the the northwestern, on the northwestern side of the wall of that room, there is a door that was locked last time uh, you folks tried it. Um, and uh, as you get up to it, Meepo sort of produces uh, a key from his 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 loincloth of of mystery, uh, and uh, after fumbling in the lock for a little bit, because you can see that it's quite worn, um, and this door hasn't been opened in a while, uh, he turns the key, and you hear a click, and the door kind of slowly creaks open as as Meepo opens it up, uh, and before you lies a unlit corridor. Um, there, it is uh, very clear that this hasn't been opened, I guess, in in, in quite a while. Um, and uh, the stench of mildew sort of permeates your noses, and, and Meepo says, D This way to the goblins. Not used in a while, but be prepared. Goblins very tricksy. Uh, and uh, who's leading? The way? I think oh. is it the same. I thought the marching order was Funko, Oscar, myself, and then Neom at the back. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Same way it's arrayed in the, the list. Fungo, yeah. can I like can I like cast light on your weapon? That way we just have a torch. Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Are you gonna have? I'm assuming that you'll have your weapon out for whatever yep. reason. Okay, so I'll I'll cast light. Too, that's a good call. Fungo's, uh I think it's Warhammer. Warhammer. Yeah. Yep. Fungo. Okay. Magnar, sorry. So so Oscar casts light on Magnar's Warhammer. Yeah, I kept checking to see if I was muted because you were yelling at me. I'm like, "What? I'm here." It's... I grab, I grab Mag Magnar's warhammer with both hands. Yep. And then a whisper, shining up real good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do that. All right. Is there anything? Is there anything to your spell casting? What do you? No, do you... I just. I mean, technically, they're all fucking miracles, right? Like they're yeah. miracles of God. So yeah. Like, I'm like, Tempest, little help, and then, like, it happened. <laughs> That's basically every time Oscar casts a spell, he's like, little help. Like, yeah. And Tempest's like, sure, I guess. Fuck. <laughs> you know, I, love the, I love the thought of your character on him. It's like, all right, cool, whatever. I don't really believe in you. <laughs> right. Yeah. Like, uh, holds the well, shining wall he knows up, like, that Tempest up. exists, right? He just doesn't necessarily believe in the whole, like, shebang. Yeah. <laughs> just like, yo, Tempest, help a brother out. Yeah. You want to yeah. help a brother out? Like, 
Uh, all right, so uh, are you letting Meepo, like, so Meepo is, like, making his way to, like, start walking down the dark corridor. I want to keep pace with Meepo so that he okay. is leading us, but I'm, like, with him in case shit goes down. All right, yeah. so, so as a note, this is, like, not a big hallway. I would say it's, like, less than a uh, corridor. It's, like, less than six feet. Uh, across so you're not necessarily yeah, like rubbing you're not rubbing bows but you're like you're you're up in each other's little, bubble he's a little dude i'm a little dude like we can make it work yeah, yeah. i was gonna say dwarf plus kobold is not necessarily the largest when it comes to human right no true but like dwarfs are dwarfs are less like up and down and more like like they're, they're thick, thick. yeah they're like they're thick. thick lads you know yeah, yeah thick, thick with thick, thick folks yeah uh so all right so you're you're walking down this 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 dark corridor um, and you, you, you pass on through, um, uh, you just see like spider webs and, and whatnot, but nothing really of note. Um, and then you finally reach, uh, the end of it as a, 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 right at the end, there's like a little bit of a turn to the, uh, to the North, uh, cause this corridor is starting like heading westward. Uh, and in front of you is a door, uh, and you hear the jingle jangle of, uh, of Meepo reaching for a key again. And he opens up the door and swings open. Uh, into a, a, it's not lit, uh, as, as much as it just seems like some of the sunlight from outside is sort of like getting a little bit through the cracks. Mm. Um, but with the Warhammer, you're quite, uh, you're, you're able to see into the room. Um, and so as you enter, uh, dust and odd bits of stony debris and rubble lie scattered around on the floor and an ornate fountain is built into the eastern wall of the room. And though cracked and stained, the fountain's overarching carving of a diving dragon still sort of retains its beauty. Hmm. Um, and a relief carved stone door stands on the western wall. And north, you see a very long hallway that extends beyond the your, your sight, beyond the light, and even beyond those of you with dark sight. You can't quite see that far down. Which way should we go, Meepo? Hmm. Meepo kind of like looks around. It has been some time since Meepo has come here, but to to the north, I think. That's where the goblins are, or to the north of where the kobolds are? Hmm. Yes, yes. You said there was a door to the west? Yes, there is. Uh, is there what's up with that door? In the fountain? There is, uh, there's not really water as much as it's like a thin layer of scum. Amazing. Kinda, okay. That's on there, but it's otherwise like it's dry. Is there anything like? Is it the? It's a fountain, right? Yes. Fountain. Is there anything like? Uh, is it just a regular old fountain, or is there? No, anything? like yeah. So like I said, there's like a big. There's a carving of like a diving dragon, kind of oh, yeah, coming yeah. out on the top. Uh, can you do, uh, Oscar? Can you do a uh, perception check for me? Hell yeah, I can. If anybody else is also checking out this fountain, you're more than welcome. What is, to. is it? A, is it a stone fountain? Or? Yes. Yeah. But it's, it's not like gilded. Gilded. No. Uh, okay. I got an 18 of perception. Okay. Oh, I got a 7 or er, 15. Okay. And so all you just are you're taking a look at this fountain. Yeah. Um, so you got a 15, Neoma, you got an 18. Are you doing any are, did you say you also wanted to check it out, uh, Magnar? Uh no, I checked it out and got a 1, so we'll just <laughs> say I didn't check it out at all. Okay. All right. Uh so um you are taking a look around both of you, Oscar and Neoma. And mm -hmm. Neoma, you notice um, that uh, there is a mostly worn away inscription of runes on it. And uh, these runes, uh, you recall, look very similar to the ones that you saw in that first tower room that were behind, um, like, the, the speared goblin there. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, so you see, you see these runes on it. And the rest of the fountain appears... Um, to be uh, fairly average. It's a stone fountain. It obviously hasn't been used in quite some time. I wish I could read these. They look identical to the ones that we saw before. Mm. Wait, oh, Meepo, Meepo, do you me, know yeah. what these are? Yeah. Meepo, Meepo kind of looks up and goes, hmm, uh, oh, uh, yes, Meepo can read. And uh, oh. and <laughs> Meepo kind of like walks up to the fountain hmm. and goes, hmm, yes, Meepo can read this. What language really? is it, Meepo? It, it is draconic. It, it is the language that we speak. That's so cool. What does it say? If, uh, is, can, would you mind telling me what it says? Actually, I should ask first. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Meepo. So Meepo looks at it and goes, mm, 
and says, Let there be fire. And as Meepo says this, uh, <laughs> a reddish liquid begins to well from the diving dragon's mouth. What is that? Uh, <laughs> oh, and like it's, that. it slowly starts ac- uh, accumulating in the basin. Um, and as it uh, as it fills itself back up to the the tippity top of uh, you know of each basin's like you know maximum containing, uh, it, it rests there, and is and then like finally lava? and the, and then finally the the reddish liquid stops pouring out of the the mouth. Is, is it, it like... lava? Like, is there heat coming out of it? No, yeah. no. It is just it, it it you you ascertain it, it is room temperature liquid. Uh, it's not, or at least from what you could tell, it's not hurting you. F- by standing near it. It's just reddish. Uh, so, what is that? Mm-hmm. Meepo, is, Meepo has not seen this before. Yeah, I don't... Uh, I've never seen anything. Yoma, you know magic. Do you know anything about this? Um, I mean... I, I can... I can see if it's magic. And what about you, Magmar? Magnar, pardon me. It's like, don't dwarves know a thing about stones? Uh, I mean, my first thought was lava, but this is giving off no heat at all. So I, I will say, uh, Magnar, because you're probably familiar with it, the uh, it, it does give off kind of a sulfurous aroma. It kind of smells oh. a little bit like uh, stanky eggs. Gross. Okay. Because uh, I have, uh, obviously, history with the forge and everything, so is that mm-hmm. part of a... It's not. I wouldn't be an Arcana check, surely. Um, I, I can. Know, what would you even cast? I I would say you can all do. You could do an Arcana check, or um, if you have uh, knowledge in anything like like alchemy and whatnot, I would also okay. say you could. You would. You'd have some knowledge regarding that. I don't have alchemy, but I could. Or medicine. Could... If... Oh, medicine. Oh, I could do medicine as well, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, then roll it up. Uh, I got a twenty-three. Okay. To medicine. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, Oscar, do you have any? Have you worked with like alchemists or anything like that when you were getting like war training or anything? Uh, probably not a ton, but just for like salves and like you know what I mean, like anything that would be used on the field of battle, kind of right. thing. Right. Like just for field healing. Okay. That's it. So you may, with a 23, I'll say you may have come across this on the field of battle as um, the, the, the scent and, and the viscosity. Like, do you, do you touch it or anything like that? Like, what do you do to investigate? Yeah, it? I guess I, like, I'll check for heat. Okay. So, and then, like, I would, like, hover my hand over, right? Yeah. Like, okay, well, it doesn't. So it's quite warm, um, but it's, like, room temperature warm. Like, it's not going to scald you or anything like that. And with, between the sulfurous and whatnot, you can tell that this is something that if bottled um and 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 drunk uh it oh. would it would it would give you yeah. it it would bestow you you've seen like mages and whatnot use something like this and yeah 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 i've seen something like this yeah mages yeah so, what is it what does it do uh if you drink it does it relate to fire? Because that's how that's what Meepo just said it was. No, it's kind of like uh, you become a super homie when you drink it. Like, well, yeah. So you you would you would say that you've seen people then expel fire. This 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 magic it, it, potion. You would say that this oh, this stuff would breathing. would give you the ability to breathe fire briefly. Uh, yeah. You All right. So here's, here's the flame. moment where the idiot kid has to do the anime thing. Tully's oh, gonna go yeah. reach in with his hands and then just like have a big slip of oh, it. Oh my god! Yes. <sighs> Uh, okay, so all right, how many how many people are standing okay. around this? So, Tully runs up. You said it's a magic potion, and I, like yeah, I'm gonna let it get to his lips. Like, I'm gonna let him drink it, but I'm definitely gonna smack him. Like when I see him drinking it already. Like, so like I feel half like both, of it made it in. Yeah, like I'm both gonna let Adam, him do it. Like I'm gonna let him do the thing that he wanted to do. Right? Like I like that both Adam and I. My first reaction was just to say, uh, as Tully <laughs> reached in to grab it. Okay, you can breathe fire. Okay. I, I don't like fire sh- as a body. as a water being. Well, so no, who, thank you. So well, Neoma and Oscar went up to check it, right? And I guess I did too because I rolled a one. So everybody is there in the vicinity. Tully has ingested some, we'll say, of this. Yeah. 
I need everybody, Meepo included, is going to do a dexterity check. What? Yeah. I do that thing where you like grab your dog's mouth and like, what do you got in your mouth? And then runs away. Yeah. What are you doing? Spit it out. <laughs> what do you got? A knife. <laughs> yeah. So we need to make a dex oh, no. check. All right. Uh, you don't, Tully. Oh, cool. Okay. A dex check? A dex check. Do we get Magna bonus? Is it like a dex saving roll? Like a Yes, it is a dex saving throw. I got an eleven. Okay. Magna got fifteen. I got a two. All right. Uh... So uh so Tully, as you ingest part of this uh as part of this liquid, you, you you feel a burning sensation in your chest and that kind of wells up through your lungs and you hold it for like a moment before okay. like you cannot anymore and you you feel the need to expel the liquid from your mouth yeah uh, and, fire. and as you do a, a, a short burst of fire because you didn't drink a tremendous amount no. shoots out uh and oscar's kind of hanging on to you a little bit trying to stop you but the the force of it coming out kind of jostles his hand a little bit uh and and you kind of spin away as right towards neo who uh, ends up taking uh, two points of fire damage as it kind of scorches her arm as the, ah! the a plume of fire shoots out. Jesus. Tully! Tully? I thought oh. I could control it. You said it was a magic potion. Tully! You gotta let me finish my sentences. Look, I'm really sorry. It's okay. It didn't hurt that bad. Do not know. He needs to know that this was bad. <laughs> Do not. Do not. He's going to roll up the newspaper. <laughs> yeah. He said he was sorry. He looks he, like he's sorry. Yeah, but you're hurt. There's consequences to actions if you just rush into things. All right? I'm sorry. Just rub his nose in the bush. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> well, okay. Now that I, everyone's I burned, understand that you want to. I understand you want to be an adventurer. But if you're going to do this and you're going to be part of this, you need to show a little bit of restraint. Look, I know that was bad, and Tully's learned a valuable lesson. All I'm saying is, breathing fire is pretty cool. So, <laughs> does anyone okay. have? You're not a helping. I'm He's just saying. Wrong. Does anyone have a potion bottle or a flask? It doesn't make any bottle? sense. Why would you have I to didn't... breathe it immediately? Exhale it immediately. I thought you could like control this. You no, that's you what I'm saying. Use you fire. I'm saying take away drink later so you know if we have a flask or something we can bring with i do I not do. i do okay. all right there you go um, once the it, is not on fire here's the thing though um i don't actually want to carry this so magnar if you let me hell take yeah the water i'm already of, i'm already on board <laughs> okay i'm gonna take the water out of your water flask and then yep. you can take that oh i have an empty yep. flask aha uh -huh. Because I have an empty flask. They would so totally I'll... be allowed to carry it. No, 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 no totally double, double my water. Because you, you, you took it last session. No, I put it back. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So okay. you can take, you can have my water. Or you can just take the whole flask. Give me the, okay. uh, give me the potion. Dunk it right in there. I'll do that. And oh. cork it. Okay. And so, we're... Funk, you've got, or Magna, you've got a uh, potion of fire breath. Now, I'll, I'll say there was enough. That was batted from Tully's yeah, hands we, that you got in action. Yeah. Um, so uh, as a heads up, if you'd like to know what's going on with this, uh, when you use it, you're in its full effect, uh, you will exhale fire at a target within 30 feet of you. Uh, and the target must make a DC 13 dex saving throw. Otherwise, it takes 4d6 on a failed save or half on a successful one. Dang. Nice. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, as if, if you ever open or anything like that, you definitely get like a full like somebody somebody opened like a a, a an, an egg in in the room kind of thing. Like it is stank. Hey, Oscar, does it yeah. only work if you drink it, or can you throw it and have it explode? Uh, I do. Do I know if it's combustible? I would say you. It it is certainly. It is. It certainly could explode. I would say yes. It's. A, I think it would take a lot of work, but it might explode. Yeah. So again, the magic of the person. The more you say, the less you're not allowed to touch it ever again. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I'll just be careful not to fall over while I'm carrying it too. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, that would also be bad. The more things that you ask, Tully, (laughs) the less likely it is for you to get a hold of this ever again. It's okay. okay. I'll I've learned my lesson. All right. Um, So as you are doing this, you notice that Meepo has sort of um, strayed away Mm. from you and he's checking out. Uh, the door that is to the the directly across the room from you to the west, and this is the door that has like the um, it's kind of like carved into the 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 stone of the wall. Yeah, I was very interested in this, uh, Meepo. What are you working with there? Uh, so you see Meepo kind of like checking it out and whatnot, uh, and you see that there's uh, carvings on the door that show skeletal like dragons, mm. uh, and there's another inscription on the door, uh, and Meepo says. Uh, Maybe don't read this one out loud. <laughs> Meepo, Meepo, like uh, it was like mm, draconic. Yeah. Um, can you, Meepo? Can you write? You said you can read and write, right? Y- yes, Meepo can. Um, here, just write out what it says, but in. <laughs> okay, so Meepo <laughs> takes the pen, the the pen and the paper, uh, and and sort of starts writing down on it. And as as you're standing in front of this door. Um, you notice that the air is like noticeably cooler mm. on this side of the room. Oh, I like this. Um, and uh, Magnar, I imagine you probably got all got, like touch up on the door and stuff. Yeah. Or uh, yeah, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm investigating. Yeah. yeah. So it, the door itself is actually cold. Okay. Um, unlike the rest of the room. Uh, and uh, Meepo finishes writing and then hands it back to Neoma. Uh, and Neoma, you read on it. It says, "Rebuke the dead, open the way." Oh, e- wait, I can't turn undead. <laughs> no, oh, I'm I'll I'll hold it out and then I'll I'll let everyone read it. Yeah. What so does knows. what does rebuke the dead mean? I actually don't know what the word rebuke means. And that's that's me talking. Oh, it's like a uh, like turn them away kind of thing. Oh, like, OK. Yeah. Or when you rebuke something. It's yeah. anti anti You're, dead. You don't have turn undead. No, dude, I don't get you don't get. um. You don't get destroy undead until fifth level. They were talking. Destroy, but you should have. Turn. You have turn undead though. I thought I didn't have turn undead. You, you I, I think it's like a, a base one. thing, right? Yeah. Like, it's kind of the whole jam. Kind of like my move water thing. Like uh, I can water from the get go. Let's. Oh, I let's can see. turn it. No, I get it at channel divinity, which is second level. Oh, mm. okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I can't. All well, right. Well, that's awkward. Well, the door's cold to the touch, which is probably not great. Uh, mm-hmm. So. Yeah. What if we use the fire breathing on it? Do you think fire counters ice? No. Uh, <laughs> Tully gets a new toy and he's just like, ah. yeah. no. No, 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 no. That's the puzzle. There's the ice door and the fire fountain. No. Well, the puzzle. I mean, we could... well, step one. We're either opening the door or we're not. Because, Meepo, you said that we should be going down the corridor, right? If we want oh, to go. To... Yes. The, dwarves, the goblins are to the north. Yeah. Uh, can everybody actually do a uh, perception check? For me. Heck yeah, I can. All of y'alls. Yeah, the corridor is to the north. That's where he said we should go. Uh, What'd you get, Tully? 17. Okay. I got a 16. Neoma? I got a 16. 12. Okay. So uh, everybody but Neoma, uh, you're able to sort of tell that they're uh, on the ground. You sort of see tracks in the dust. Um, and you, uh, Tully, especially, um, sort of with your, your knowledge of the streets and whatnot, you're able to sort of tell that, uh, some of these tracks were made by rats, uh, and some were made by humanoids. Hmm. Um, can you actually Tully do a survival check for me? Yep. We have a second here. Uh, so, uh, yeah. 23 okay so Tully uh, you are able to tell that these rat tracks are probably like very recent maybe a day old mm-hmm. um, and the humanoid tracks are potentially like a few weeks old and were made by two human sized like people now which way are the tracks going though are they going to the north, north. or through the west okay north. Yeah, just like, hey, I mean, forget about the frozen zombie door. I found the tracks of our friends. I found two tracks old enough away, and they're going to the north. All right. Well, I I don't know what I can do with this door. Like, I can't. 
I don't know that there's anything we can do. Uh, well, I mean, it's out of my powers, right? Like I can't. We can oh, come back yeah. later. Yeah, when we're we stronger. Can revisit. It's a it's a test for the future. All right. <laughs> uh, okay, so you, you you start heading north. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so as you start heading north, uh, the 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 way start, starts to like illuminate as Magnar's you know light source his hammer. Uh, can I starts... say one thing first there too? Yeah. Like I want to check in with Meepo how far until he thinks we're gonna find goblins so we can be like air quotes on alert. Right. Yeah. So, so we don't just walk into a room and like a hundred goblins turn at us. You yeah, know. Yeah. Yeah. So as you're walking along, um, you notice that uh, there are tracks. Um, like you're you're walking along and and just past like a, the first archway, which is which was connecting like the room that you're currently in to the hallway. Um, you look to your uh, east to the left of you uh and you see a door and it uh, on that door there or in front of that door it's closed uh you you see footprints that lead towards it but you also lead you see footprints that continue to lead north uh and meepo goes goblins are through that way and we see the footprints going in a different direction yes okay you see footprints both going to that door as well as to the north okay one set each uh, I will say that, yeah, it's, well, no, it's the exact same kind of footprints that you've been seeing have been, have headed north. Sure. And then, um, uh, actually can Tully, because you've kind of been doing this, can you do another perception check for me? 19. Okay. Uh, so you can see that, uh, the footprints went up that way, uh, and then kind of came back and then went oh. through this door. Oh, so I've got good news about this fork in the road. Mm -hmm. It looks like our friends tried to go one way and actually doubled back. So there's only one way to go. Oh, okay. That way. That's pretty good. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Well, uh, we don't know that for sure. That's what the tracks say. I yeah. trust him. And I've been tracking people for a while, Oscar. I'm not proud of it. <laughs> My days on the street. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that that certainly was an anime ex and then yeah, like flashback was, yeah. scene yeah. from the streets. Yeah. Uh, so as Meepo goes, okay, be very careful, goblins. Goblins are this way. Um, and as you start walking towards the uh, door from down to the north, you kind of hear a creaking noise that kind of sounds like a door opening way off in the distance to the north. I make a stealth check. <laughs> Okay. I'm one of the shadows. Go for it. I roll a six. <laughs> so you hear this noise and you sort of skirt up and move to the corner of a room, like out of Magnar's light. But like, you're still like, it's kind of like you just like went to the back and you're like this and you're like, stealth. And they're like hanging out no way back here. Me now. We're yeah. all looking at you like, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah. I'm normally better at this, I promise. There's nowhere to hide in this hallway. Uh, nothing Nothing else happens beside you hear that noise. Okay. Okay. Uh, it's probably just the dungeon settling. Yeah, it's probably just walls, right? Like, just resting? Okay, that's the thing that people say before they fucking die in a horror movie, but... I mean, uh... ships do it all the time. <laughs> no, let's just go down this really dark corridor after the suspicious footprints. That'll be fine. Wait, so the way our friends are. Sorry, sorry, you're going to to the north or through the door to the west. We're following. We're following the tracks. Well, we double went. back towards the west. Right? Yeah, we, yeah. We went the way yeah. that the tracks are doubling back to. Yeah. Okay. Yes. All right. So uh, you open up the door. I assume. Mm. Who's mm -hmm. who's who's doing the door opening? Magnar for sure. Okay. Uh, so Magnar, you you open up the room and you illuminate it with your your hammer. Uh, and you see you're in an empty room. Um, there's like a few broken down bookcases and tables that sort of lay in pieces on the floor. And on the north wall of this, of this you know, relatively medium sized room, uh, there is a door. Um, and uh, if uh, you, you have seen the footprint, so if everybody could do a perception check. Okay. Uh, yep. 16. No. I got a six. All right. Uh, well, Neo, you're able to see that the yeah, uh, in this time. yeah that the uh, the footprints uh, continue leading through to that door to the north. 
Okay, so I'm sure Tully knows as well. Like we can see the footprints going to the door, so yeah. that's that's where we gotta go. Let's keep carefully yes. trailing them. Okay. Not a lot going on in here. Okay. Do you see any signs of anything happening? Like, do they just walk straight through? Does it look like they searched the room? Does it look like they fought anyone? Nope. Uh, the, it looks like like it looks kind of like the the footprints maybe walked around a little bit. But then in the end, both of them head towards the north. I will say in front of the door, uh, there looks like there's a fair bit of like scuffled kind of upturned okay. dirt and stuff. Hey, Meepo, what's this way? This is the way to the goblins. Okay. Good. All right. Okay. Magnar, go uh, open the door. Go to the door and uh, push it open. Uh, all right. So I'm going based on the words you said in which you pushed it open. Um yeah. Uh, so as you open the door, uh, the door kind of flies open as you push it. And as it kind of, uh, opens and then hits the, the, the wall, I guess, uh, that, that is resting like, uh, on the, as it, it does its full, you know, door turn, uh, you mm-hmm. hear a bell go, ding, ling, 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 ling. uh, and before you, uh, you see, you see the hallway and what look to be uh, spikes all over the place. Uh, uh, Magnar, can you do a perception check for me? Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a 13. Okay. Uh, so I will say you look up and you do see this bell on, on the door. It's just a little, it almost looks like a, um, like a, a bell you would see in like a shopkeep when you open a door. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, tingling. Uh, yeah. And on the ground and amongst the entire hallway spread like on the walls, on the ground, on the roof, uh, you estimate there are about 2,000 caltrops spread throughout the entire uh, hallway. Yikes. Uh, and on the very, uh, at the end, because this is about maybe, I'd say like 15, 20 feet uh, down, uh, there is an open doorway and what looks like a bit of a, like a battlement that's about three feet high off the ground on the uh, on the on the on uh, like in front of the door blocking it, uh, and you see two sets of beady little red eyes poke their uh, poke their heads over the battlement. Uh, okay, would uh, my rich dwarven history with goblins lead me to be able to smell if there are goblins in this room? Uh, you would say. They're not in the hallway, but at that room at the end. Yes, you can definitely detect the uh, the, in the of goblins. You, there's none in the couch. It's just a long, about like ten feet, ten foot wide by maybe like fifteen, twenty, twenty five feet uh, long. Oh, I see. Leading up to the room. Yeah, yeah. So like the hallway is not that wide. It's just got caltrops everywhere in it. Hmm. Okay. Uh, well, I yell at everyone to come up here i mean i guess they're coming because the fucking bell's going yeah. so yeah. uh i yell out a warning that i smell goblins mm-hmm. uh and then just get to the caltrops because the fuck are we gonna do with this uh i guess the the plan i say to the others like i guess this is, this is the alarm system this is a bit okay. weird real uh, quick Where, what are caltrops they're uh, like the spike s- traps. Yeah. yeah they're like what the little spiky eating? things yeah. Think of like somebody put a bunch of D fours that but are made of oh, and they're okay. spiky. Yeah. yeah, that's why that's yeah. why the D four is called like a D caltrop. Yes, yeah. gamer caltrops. Mm-hmm. Yep. So it's spikes sticking straight up, so we can't just rush in. Yeah. 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 Uh, fuck. I don't know like... what to do. Are we rolling for initiative or are we? Nope. They, 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 the, the goblins are peering at you down through Just the hallway. close the door and back away. Yeah, Magnar, can you stop <laughs> yeah. the alarm? It's really loud. Uh, can I reach up and stop the bell from alarming? Well, the bell, like, like it, it, it didn't, it's not, like, continuously ringing, right? Oh, it just, it just rang You rang opened it, and it was like, and you can see the eyes of the down that they have clearly seen you. Yeah. Okay, so if we can't get to them quickly, though, they probably can't get to us quickly. I have a bow and arrow if they turn hostile. Hmm. Well, I mean, I have my shield. I could sweep the caltrops out of the way, but that's going to be slow going. Nam, do you have any magic that could just like push everything to the side? Uh, are we sure they're hostile? I mean, they're not friends. We are here to goof them up pretty good. 
I say we just no, close the door. We're here for a dragon. We just close the door. Yeah, I just can't. back away. I this can't. is the way we have to go. I mean, there's the other way. The other way, they doubled back. They didn't go that. Way. I mean, we they... didn't look. We didn't look that way. We just assumed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we just assumed that it wasn't the way to go. Like, I will. You, I... you. You. You weren't good enough to. I would say. Us, like ascertain that they have the same exact set of footprints going there. Yeah, we don't they're just. Know I the said there's way. one set of footprints that went up, and there's another set of footprints that. I can tell you back. that I have nothing that is going to fix this situation quickly unless somehow the wall opens up with a giant pool of water. I don't. Mm. I don't have any resources. Uh, right I'm quick. Go ahead, Magnar. Right quick. Can I grab like five caltrops and just pop them in my bag just for later? Uh, are they fixed to the ground? Sure. Go to you, no, the they're door. not. They're just straight up caltrops. So you enter okay. the room and go to pick hey, up the caltrops. Oh. Three caltrops. I mean, if they're just on the floor, couldn't we just like, 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 two sharp feet? Like, so, sure. Well, like, they start, they start going that way. The people at the end are going to start, you know, finding yeah, the like, this. Yeah. And any progress we make through here is going to be slow going and probably under fire. So like, so you one. Magnar, do you drops. lean down to go grab them? Yeah. Okay, so you lean down and scoop up a couple of caltrops. They're not affixed to the ground or anything. They're in the standard way where they've got like three prongs, you know, like down, right? And then one prong up. Yep. Um, so you pick them up, and as you're doing so, the goblins at the end are like, rat, 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 and oh, like screaming no. at you from down the hallway. Yeah. Anyone speak goblin? Uh, I know. Nope. Yep, I sure do, actually. Oh. I, tell them to go fuck, I tell them to go fuck themselves and grab the caltrops. Holy well, what do they say first? <laughs> All right. So the goblin was like, hey, what the heck do you think you're doing? Yeah. <laughs> Some go responds. And I yell out free caltrops and then in goblin. Okay. Uh, so the... after, after telling them to go fight, right. we're fighting. We have no yeah. idea what he's saying, though. We don't, we could, we could. Oh, well, we don't you know guys don't know, yeah. Yeah. Well, so... I think I can. Could figure it out by his body language uh, sometimes there are he some always phrases. looks like that how do we know there are some phrases that you can tell regardless of the language i mean i have <laughs> also spoken about how dwarves don't like goblins like yeah uh, leading up to this so you can probably figure it out hey funko Yo. what's what's your ac uh it is 16 okay uh so a as you as I assume you you're all arguing about <laughs> about this in front of the door while Funk, while Magnar is picking up yeah, these caltrops, uh, you 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 hear a from like down the end of the hallway as an arrow comes in and and uh, shoots and hits uh, hit Funko sort of like wishes by you uh, and deals one damage as it like kind of clips your shoulder a little bit. Okay. Whoa 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 whoa! All right. What? It's go time. Mag no, no. Ma Magnar. They're pretty far they away, so. Magnar, I mean, hey. what is going on? Look, I stole caltrops. I thought we were about to book it, so I was just going to take the caltrops. They swore at me, so I swore back. It's just how it happens sometimes. You know, you haven't dealt with goblins before. This is kind of how it goes. So they didn't like that, it turns out. And I pointed the arrow down there. Um, also, Tully, free arrow. Um, so... I add one arrow to my inventory. I like how thrifty Magnar is. <laughs> this is what Neoma's doing right now. Yeah. All right, and then I just calmly close the door and we back away. Okay, so you close the door. So as you close yeah. it, you hear another like, -tunk, tunk, like on the and back of it. Yeah. <laughs> the bell chimes again. Um, yeah. Well, we should get the hell out of here. Now yeah, we no, really have to boogie. Yeah, so no. now I the problem. From my experience, now if we have to go back through that door, there's going to be like eight more of them, and they're going to be ready. So opening Wait, that door, door again is door, tough. Is the door wood? Yes. I have uh, ten climbing pitons in my thing. Can I nail the door shut just so they can't come through? Yes, you you absolutely like like. Are you fixing it like from door to like the 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 wall kind of a thing? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Sure. Uh, I'll say it takes you about like five or ten minutes to do so. But well, yeah. Yeah, maybe I mean, not I, even five. I, I, I pose it to the group. I'm like, look, I understand there's some tension here. Trust me, <laughs> I've dealt with these people before. What if I just lock this door up real good with this climbing piton? Then they can't rush us from behind while we go off. How long will it take for you to open it if we have to come back this way? Oh, easy. Just chop it real quick. All right. Yeah, let's do that. Sure. 
Uh, okay, so <laughs> you you board up the door. Um, I'm kind of picturing this for the goblins. It, you you know that scene from Monty Python where like they from uh, Holy Grail where they run off and they construct like the the horse or the rabbit. And, yeah, and like the the people are just sort of like hearing like the construction noises and whatnot. So the goblins are just at the end of the hallway and they hear like like hammering and like tink tink tink. Uh, like like sawing. Yeah 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 yeah. Um, well, so, I mean, I personally had like because I pushed the door in, right? Hmm. Yes. So I figured I put a climbing peach on in the wall, rope yeah. to the door. Yeah. Now they can't open. Yes, absolutely. The door. Back. You you right. you you would say with your knowledge of you know crafting and whatnot that this door is quite yeah. fastened shut. Okay. Was, wow. Good. What a genius. Okay. Mm. I don't. He stole. I mean, that's pretty smart, right? He... Magnus, that was very smart. I. Thank you. Just stops talking and starts yeah. walking. Anyway. So, so Meepo's sort of watching this, and uh, he's kind of just like, "Hmm, um, Meepo is Meepo's not sure if there is another way into the Goblin area, but Meepo Meepo has not gone n north before, so yeah. maybe there is another way." We'll just go see. Yeah, we'll we'll explore. We can always come back this way. We can always come back. Okay. Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, coming back is going to be awkward because we're like, oh my god, it's like, hey, what's up? We got yeah. your, we, we found these cow traps. No, you yeah. went, you, you oh went, god. you went out of the mob aggro radius. They reset. Eventually. Put it this way: oh. if they want to know what's on behind this door, they're going to have to clear all those cow traps off to come and look. So yeah. by the time we get back, maybe problem solved. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, all right. So I assume you guys are are leaving and heading north. Then is that the plan? Yeah, that's the no, plan. Follow those footsteps again. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, so you exit back out and kind of go the way you came and turn north. Um, and uh, you're walking down the hallway. Uh, and as you continue north, you kind of enter an area. Like, the hallway still stays the same, but you start seeing uh, ahead uh, about three sets of doors on either side of the hallway. Uh, and each of these doors is, like, slightly ajar. Um, you also notice as you're so, kind of... so oh. what's up? What's up? Is, is this a Monty Hall problem? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you, you see these doors as well as kind of the rest of the surrounding area, um, in this hallway appears to be, um, uh, covered, um, loosely in, uh, mildew and, um, growth like algae and, and, and stuff like that. Um, there are like little tiny mushrooms poking out of like the 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 walls and like cracks and stuff. So you can see that there's kind of like life. Um, can I do? Um, I love mushrooms. Mm -hmm. Can I do a survival check to keep trying to track where the footprints went, like their their path through all this? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I got a twenty one. Yeah, twenty one. Okay, so you can absolutely tell that the there's a set a pair of footprints that have gone up and a pair of footprints that have come back. Same footprints. Uh, I will say you can't quite ascertain that. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So it's just like, well, there's a pair of footprints that goes this way. Mm -hmm. And then same like last time, there's a pair of footprints that go back. Okay. Well, we either go forward or we go back and try to deal with the Caltrops. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, so you, as you're kind of like looking and seeing these doors, um, you do kind of see like a small form sort of shuffle out of one door. Uh, on like the right hand side, the farthest door, and then kind of walk across uh, and go into the other door on the other side. How small is this form? I would say uh, it's the, the size, size of a cat, or the the, size of a about person? the size of a medium sized dog. Like, yeah, yeah, like, what? like this. Uh, uh, <laughs> like, uh, how big were they describing the dragon? Like, like this. Yeah. Meepo, how big? How big was how? your dragon again? Mm -hmm. Not, it's much bigger than that. Okay, we haven't. Well, that about. that's far away though, so maybe. Are you saying it might be Calcrex? Oh, I mean, maybe. I don't know. It could be. Meepo I'm starts not, kind not of like saying, shuffling no. down the hallway. Calcrex! No! Calcrex, it's Meepo! Oh, fucking God damn it. We are the worst. Well, I'm I'm still going forward with him at the same time. Yeah, so yeah. A, a quick hand on him and go ah, da, 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 and just like mm. drag him back a little bit. Mm. He still shouts and stuff. But, oh, okay. 
Hold up there, bud. Let's let's go forward together, huh? Okay. Uh. So yeah, you're you're kind of I would say at at the at the precipice, like to your left and your right, there are doors. Um, and, and I would say in between each is about five feet of uh, of space. Well, we should probably clear these rooms, right? Which room did the thing shuffle into? The far, the farthest left door. Should just go to the thing, right? Yeah, let's do it. Uh, uh, can we just maybe clear these couple rooms before we just go charging past them? Sure, that's Ragnar. Probably important. Yeah, let's let's just open this door on the left, the first door on the left, and gingerly just mm -hmm. to check okay. for bells, uh, and then <laughs> okay, okay. We'll uh, slice the pie and, and just make sure it's clear. Uh, Magnar, can you do a uh, perception check for me? That's a 10. Okay. Uh, it, looking at the door, you can see that there are no bells. Okay. Um, and and, is it a push, is it a push or pull situation? Well, the doors are all slightly ajar. Enough yeah. that I would say okay. somebody like of Tully or Meepo's size could probably fit through. Oh, they're immobile? No, no, no. Like, you could, you could absolutely move them, but I'm just saying, like, that's how open they are. Like, someone could sneak oh. through without opening I it see. anymore. But you're absolutely able to open it if you're trying to do that. Yeah, I just want to, like, peek in real quick. Okay. Uh, so you peek in to the left side room, and inside the room, uh, you don't see really anything of note, but you can tell that these are jail cells. Um, ah, okay. there, there's, like, a little, uh, like, bench that's kind of suspended by, like, two chains on either side. Um, mm -hmm. But you do note that in these rooms, uh, there's a little bit more of that fungal growth uh, that uh, I, I mentioned that, like, the, there's there's life in the in these cells a little hmm. bit. Um, do, Niaba, do you know what these mushrooms, I assume these are mushrooms, what this is, this stuff? Um, I mean, I can take a look at it. Wait, anyone, I guess, Tully, anyone? Is anyone, like, I don't know much about mushrooms, so. Has, has yeah. anybody spent a lot of time, like, in the, with, around mushrooms or in, like, the, the forest or anything? Well, well, I've seen a... anything. Sure, uh, Oscar, you could do that. Neo, I've, do you? I've seen a lot of like, I worked on a ship that had a lot of incoming and outgoing shipments, so I've worked in a lot of like storage of creatures, foods, all That's, sorts of things. Okay, items. yeah. So forest. I have natural explorer for forest, okay. which is my my ranger perk for natural environment. Like, if it's a forest related thing, then that's well. Who has nature? Does anyone have night nature? It would be Tully, right? If you're if you're examining this using a, a knowledge in your way, I would like you to use the role that you think would best uh, okay. suit your based on your knowledge. Tell me what that is and what you rolled. So, so based on Natural Explorer, if this counts as a forest, I get double my proficiency bonus on it, and sure. I'd have a twenty five to this role to be like, ah, yes, I've seen these mushrooms in the forest before. These are the <laughs> right, right, uh, Oscar. Uh, I got a 19 medicine. Okay, and Neo? I got a 19 for survival. Okay, so Oscar and Neo, you can both say by looking at this mushroom, it is a, uh, it's, it's, it's quite small, you know, it's like a, it's a little baby mushroom uh, grouping. They're, uh, from what, just on the surface, any of you can see, uh, they are purple, um, like violet sort of color. Um, and they seem to have uh, like little like roots that kind of spread throughout the entirety of the uh, the cell. Um, uh, Tully, you mm -hmm. have n you have seen mushrooms of this size. This seems a little bit larger than your your average like kind of mushroom. Um, okay, but uh, you personally have never interacted with a mushroom like this before. Okay, so it's not a forest mushroom. No, even okay. Uh, with a 25 uh, to survival, do I have the idea that it might be poisonous? Do I have the idea that it's like a water mushroom? You, or... you could easily tell just kind of based on Mushroomers 101 that this is not yeah. something you should put in your body. <laughs> okay. So are you like, so, sure? No. So these are, these are poisonous mushrooms. Uh, I'm not quite sure why they're growing here, but yeah. All right. Cool. So there's there's a just like a big black mold growing and everything in the area is becoming toxic. Uh, are these the type of cells that we could like go down the hallway and then just like sweep, or is this the yes. sort of thing that we'd have to open every door? No, like I said, every single door is slightly ajar. Okay, yeah, yeah. So we can just we can just walk down and and be on guard and not have to worry yeah. about. I just want to make sure we glance in. That seems prudent. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. So as you uh, you leave and you decide to start just kind of poking your head. You notice, like, the first one on the right, there's nothing. The first one on the left, there's nothing. 
and or the second one on the left there's nothing second one on the right there's nothing but now you're approaching the door where you for sure saw a shape enter yeah. like scuffle across so i'll give you the mm-hmm. opportunity if you'd like to do something different i roll perception uh, i yeah. mean if there's something scuffling into it we should probably like very quietly approach it yeah if there's something in it i don't want to scare it cool all right everybody make a stealth check oh that's not good uh i got an eight okay i got a nine i got an eight i got a 14. all right it's all right we're uh, stealthy meepo got a two uh so uh so you guys are like let's be quiet yeah. And like stomp on on through. Uh not like loud, but you just aren't any more quiet, I would say, than you have been walking already. Yeah. Um and uh Magnar, I assume you kind of been at the head. Do you like peer into that room? Yeah. Yeah, so, I'm gonna take a peek. So you kind of gingerly look around and you can see inside the room what look to be two um you've got dark vision because you're a dwarf, so you'll say you see two what look like giant rats gnawing at uh a like the bones of uh what is like a smaller humanoid shape you could probably make it out to be like a kobold or a mm-hmm. goblin um and uh, on their backs are these same mushrooms that you've mm. seen kind of growing throughout uh growing out uh. these ones are slightly larger and these rats look a little bit more um the parasite situation. diseased yeah it's it's it, it it seems like it's a little bit of a parasitic relationship pokemon all over again hmm. Hmm. gross uh so did they have they reacted they to have us? not reacted to you okay just close I the turn... door well, rats can't open doors that's not bad that. i whisper back that's not bad <laughs> <laughs> and just gingerly shut the door <laughs> okay so you close the door and inside you hear like a little bit of squeaking and whatnot uh mm. and then you feel a little bit of force against the door trying to clearly push it open mm-hmm. well jokes on uh, them it's a prison <laughs> yeah does it latch shut or is it like there there is a keyhole uh-huh um presumably we don't have wait does anyone Meepo. have Meepo? Meepo. Uh, Meepo, Meepo goes, look, looks up and goes, y- yes? What, ha- what? Can you try your crotch key in this and see if it works? <laughs> uh, so Meepo reaches into his uh, his keyring crotch uh, and pulls out keys. And he's like slowly kind of going through. Mm, no, not this one. Mm, no, not this one. And as he's like going through, like the doors are like. And like yep, the, uh, the. Take your time, bud. Yeah. Mm, um. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe uh, Meepo's never used this one before. And Meepo inserts uh, the key into the lock uh, and turns it, and you hear a, and uh, and the door locks. So I get done. Right. Top, right. top of the food chain, motherfucker. Like, there's a reason why. That's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, Meepo. Good work, Meepo. I give him a little. Hey, Meepo. Hey, Meepo did good. Yeah, Meepo did, did good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I guess that's the, and then we look. If we we check the right room where they came from, I assume nothing's going on in there. There are nothing. Just more of these mushrooms okay. and stuff growing out of the walls. Okay. I love that we locked him in this cell. That makes me so happy. <laughs> yeah. Well, see you later, nerds. Uh, yeah. Well, I guess there's only one way for us to go. Yep. Let's push yeah. on. Yeah. You just keep on heading north. Yeah. Um, so as you start heading north, uh, you see at the end uh, that the, the hallway sort of opens up. Um, and very clearly, Magnar, uh, actually, Magnar, I'm going to have you do a perception check because you're at the front. Uh, that is a 18. Okay, so with an 18, uh, as you are walking towards this room, you notice um, in front of the hallway, like maybe just like, less than a foot out as the hallway ends, there is a five by five foot pit that is why that looks to be jammed open with like a bone. Uh, and it's very clearly like a trap that somebody has sprung open uh, oh. and, and wedged it open. Uh, and you see uh, that the footprints have kind of walked around it, like skirted around the, the trap. So when you mean mm. a pit with a, a, a grate on it, are we talking like a bear trap? So there's a big metal thing that tried to get it, or it's a no, pit like it's a trap? pit because a bear trap is not a pit, 
right? A bear trap is just a, jammed open with a bone. That's the part that I'm getting confused about. So it's like, like a it's a trap door that would be open, right? So the trap door part is jammed open with a bone. So it can't close. Whole, yeah, yeah it can't close. It's, it's wide hole. open. It's very uh, clearly. Okay. Like the, so the, just... the the element of surprise of this trap mm -hmm. is gone, and it is effectively a hole with a pit with spikes at the bottom. Nice. nice. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, ahead on the north wall, you see a, another one of those dry fountains that looks exactly the same hey. as the one you saw uh, back there. Uh, Tully. However, Tully. there is uh, it, there's another one of these diving dragons. Um, but you notice that there is a, as you're kind of all walking around, and I assume you kind of, I won't, I, I'll see what you guys do, but you do notice that there is a, um, rotten stench that sort of, uh, pervades the room a little bit. Stinks okay. In here, y'all. Uh, Smells so like between, dead. so we've got the, the open pit in the middle and the fountain, and those are the two obvious features in the room. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so probably don't need to examine the pit. If anyone could just probably steer clear of that, I look at Tully as I say. Uh, and then, <laughs> if we uh, go over to the fountain, is it have any inscriptions like the last one? Yeah, I do want to know. So what? you're all you're all kind of scurrying around, I, and walking I, up. I, I will... only go up if Tully doesn't touch anything that comes out of it. I'll yeah. wait here. I'll wait here. So you're like I'll in the center of the room. Tully? I'm gonna be by the door, just kind of like looking from afar, being like, Ooh. "Well, there's no, sorry, there's no, there's no door coming from where you come. It's just well, a hallway, that, the hallway that went in, and it opens up into a room. So I'll be near the entrance. I approach the fountain and examine the stonework. Okay, so for sure. for clarification, have you walked around the 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 trap door into the room, Tully? Or are you still on the other side of the trap? Door I'm on the other side. Of... Okay. Um. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, and Oscar, are you, what are you up to? Are you walking in as well? Or are you staying with Tully? Uh, I'll walk into the room. Okay. So the three of you are walking towards the fountain? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so you notice as you are entering, uh, the room, um, that on the, uh, western side of the hallway, there is a door. Um, and in front of that door as well is the same pit that is also wedged open, and it looks like the footprints have gone around into that door as well. So there's two pits. Yeah, there's one right there. It's a, it's just like a square room, and like in an L, you know, like on here's the here's the the hallway entering. There's a pit, and then you entered in, and to your west, to the west or the east, there is a, another door with a pit, and then there's the the fountain and stuff. So as you're walking up to the fountain, you uh, see that yeah, like like I said earlier, it is the it is very it is identical to the fountain that you saw earlier. Um, can everybody do a perception check? Uh, yeah, uh, just the three of them or me as well? Uh, Tully, you're not yeah, you're not checking it out. So yeah, it's I mean, yeah. yeah yeah, my bad. Oscar and Magnar and Neoma. Uh, I got a ten. Okay. Seventeen. Magnar got nineteen. Ooh. Okay. Do you get extra because this is made of stone or anything like that? Uh, that's on history checks, not okay. perception. Okay. So, um, Magnar, as you're sort of looking at this thing, um, you are sort of admiring the stonework and whatnot, um, and you see that in the dragon's mouth, there appear to be like suspicious metallic tubes that are carved into the mouth itself um as well as a small rusted like iron canister um and t uh neoma you see that there is a uh another one of these inscriptions on the the fountain itself written in draconic did Does... meepo come with us meepo Does is with you thing? yeah meepo is with you it, it, it is it, it is draconic and meepo goes meepo can read it Mm -hmm. Okay, don't read it out loud. Is it the same as the other fountain? No. The, you you can also tell that these are different looking runes and stuff. Okay. Can you do what we did with the, the door? Can you write it down on the paper for me, Meepo? Yes. Yes. Okay. And I'll hand it to him. Okay. So Meepo takes the paper, writes on it, uh, and hands it back to you. And on the paper it says, let there be death. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or, uh, I don't. So, so Tully actually can't 
can't read it from that far. Well, uh, yeah, Tully can all, uh, like, yeah, t oh, you mean the paper, yeah, yeah, yeah. The paper, yeah. So, oh, he saw us all react and go, oh, okay. okay. <laughs> What's happening? Oh, not backing away from the vent. Uh, yeah, well, we, count, make more magic shit. potions? Uh, um, you know what? It, it's possible it is a potion of D-E-A-T-H, and I spell oh, it out okay. because I don't know what's going to trigger this thing. Yeah. Um, like, this is a bad fountain. This is no, no good. Why don't we just not... Let's not test it. No, we'll take a pass, hard pass on this. Okay. Thank mm. you, Meepo. Me we are not going to say this out loud, though, okay? Me Meepo is here to help. You helped a lot. Thank yeah. you so much. What a this home. is the fountain of a no thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, now, the other door, is that uh, pit situated such that we can't get through it? Or no, you could absolutely in? skirt around it like you did okay. with this hallway. So, <laughs> that way, right? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Is that where the footprints go? Sure. Mm -hmm. All right, let's keep it rolling. Okay. Uh, so as That's you approach deep, okay. this door, you you're like you are overwhelmed with like the stench of like rotting meat coming I from the other this side of it. So much. Oh, some goblins been cooking up here, right? <laughs> Hey. From the pit, like, there are a bunch of bodies. Yeah, hey, Oscar, Oscar gets it. Yeah, all right. <laughs> that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah every once in a while. Uh, okay. right. so hold the, from hold the, the pit, from the other side of the door. Sorry, Funko, go ahead. No, 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 that's a valid question. What, what were you asking? I think it's from... Where is the smell coming from the pit or from the other side of the door? From the other side of that door. There could hmm. be something. Does, does <laughs> there could be the anything on the other side anything? there. There could even be undead on the other side of that door. Mm -hmm. Ooh. You're right. There could be. Possibility. All right. I'm going to position myself on the far side of the pit with my bow and arrow and be like, Magnar, if you open the door, I'll have a good line of sight. We're not going to open the door yet. This Why is not? kind of the only way to go. So to go. we got to go this way. Yeah. Oh. I think we open the door. Prepare. I think everyone prepares themselves for the worst case scenario. Uh, and then I'll go up and investigate the door first. Not just going to slam it open. Who would ever okay. do that? Yeah. Okay. So uh, let's make like, me a perception check. check. Okay. Can I put Meepo behind me a little bit? Yeah, for sure. Meepo, Meepo okay. stands behind you. Come to the other side of the pit with me, Neoma. That's um, a 19. Uh, okay, so Magnar, you can, from looking at it, tell that there is not a bell or anything attached to this door. Okay. All right, here we go. Everyone ready? Born ready. I'll get right behind Magnar. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll be near Tully, and I'll bring Meepo with me. Okay. So, uh, Magnar, you open the door. And as soon as you open the door, the smell gets worse. But this is not like, it's not necessarily like meat kind of thing. This is more like, um, it smells earthy kind of a thing. Like, like this is like, I would say like compost kind of a thing. Would you describe it as dank? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I know if it smelled like a dead body. Yeah. And as you open uh, the door, an oppressive smell uh, rises from, you can see uh, there are carcasses of like cave rats and smaller vermin. And, That's a yes, Oscar. <laughs> um, and a few actual like humanoid looking creatures uh, that you can, Magnar is able, able to tell that these are goblins. Um, and the entire room is just covered in these mushrooms, like everywhere. Um, and all the corpses as well that are on the ground are also covered in spores. And in the Didn't... center mm. of the room, there is like a eight foot tall gigantic mushroom that seems to be like inflating and deflating as though it were breathing. Magna, use the fire breathing. Whoa. Actually, that's not a bad idea. That's not a bad idea. Not the worst idea I've ever heard. I'm going to. All right. I just look at everyone and go, uh-huh, yeah. That's Everyone's not a bad idea. Is. So I'm going to take the potion out of my belt, pop the cork off with my thumb like a badass, and just chug the whole thing. Okay. And then let fly into the room with as much gusto as I can. Sure. All right. So you, you, yeah, you, you, you take it on out uh, and, and ingest it, and the fire pours from your, from your lungs and shoots out into the room. I assume, are you, oh. you have to, it's at a target, so... Are you aiming? Where are you aiming right now? Uh, okay. I mean, I want to aim for like 
best area of effect. And I'm hoping that the spores are flammable and it's going to catch okay. more than what I breathe uh, on. Just let me double also, check. I also, while you're doing that, I want to, like I say, while I breathe, I want to breathe and then, like, duck back behind the door just in case the whole thing blows. Do you go okay. for the corpses or the big mushroom? So that's the thing, um, right? So it's it's a it's a target within. So it, it oh. does it's not like a it's not like a cone that you're shooting out. It's oh, kind of like you're like, okay. yeah. Uh, I mean the big daddy, right? You're aiming for yeah. the big mushroom. <laughs> Please yeah. don't call the mushroom the big daddy. Please call it. <laughs> okay, I want to me... go for big daddy mushroom. All right, <sighs> give me one yeah. second because this mushroom needs to make a dexterity check. Uh huh. Magnar, oh. is, isn't Magnar's last name Firebeard? Oh, hell yeah, it is. That's really funny. <laughs> that is pretty uh, funny, actually. That, that works out quite well. Uh, okay, I just, I actually don't know what the dexterity on this thing is. All right, cool. Okay. We see a giant mushroom, like, do a backflip and jump out of a fireball. Say, it's an immobile mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to say a negative on this one. Okay, here's the thing. I need to break this down for you. Please. The mushroom's dex is one, which gives it a negative five modifier. <laughs> okay. I rolled 19. Which is which with the modifier puts it at fourteen. Now with a potion of fire breath, <laughs> it has to beat a thirteen dex saving throw. Which, <laughs> fuck off. Which means it just popped fuck the quick lean fuck and like yeah. fuck Funko off. Funko like Neo shot. in the Matrix just bent backwards and just dodged all. How the does the mushroom dodge this? I'm gonna say oh. Funko shot this flame out of its mouth out of his mouth and like during one of its like or like it's it's like uh i guess exhales that it did it, like where it kind of skinnies out a little bit it just you you whiffed it just like barely and the the fire continues past the mushroom and hits the back wall where there are also like spores and and all kinds of fungus and whatnot and they ignite okay that's not awful okay. um and so the back half of the room is on fire and as this happens um you hear just the most unholy shriek kind of like uh like the shrieking eels like like a nazgul cry out into the out into the uh, air and everybody like you cannot like you have to cover your ears like this is terrible uh, right. And you so see after Tali's finished screaming, what happens? Yeah, <laughs> you. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> the right. mushroom is like jiggling uh, and squirming, and you see like roots kind of like flying a little bit. Um, and yeah, all this is going on right now. Uh, what do you do? Ooh. Well, I'm assuming close the door and walk away. <laughs> Fuck, that's like all the door oh. shut. No, I think we got to clear this one. We gotta uh, go. We gotta go in, Magnar. Yeah, so uh, I, I look at, I mean, I, as this is kind of burning, I say, do we worry about spores here? Like, do we want to, like, mask up or something? Or do uh, we just... I don't really have the... How ability bad are spores? Uh, yeah, I they guess. They can be very bad, yes. Okay, <laughs> okay good to know. The, and then the we spectrum of bad things, yeah. Not great. Very bad. Yeah. Okay, I shrug, and then we, we push forward. All right. So you're all entering the room? Well, me and Magnar are. These two, the other two are on the other side of the pit. We're on the other Every side. Clear line of sight of the mushroom from the other side of the pit. I would say as long as nobody is standing in front of the door in any remote way, yes. Good. Well, Oscar and I are both combat fellows. We could yeah. push in and then separate to give them a line of sight. I guess, tell, don't you've got, did you, no, right, sorry, that's from a different D&D &D campaign. I was like, oh, sharpshooter, but no, that's a different, that's a character that TQ plays. So in we're, my, we're level campaign. one, my dude. Yeah. Uh yeah. So uh yeah, okay. So Magnar and Oscar have entered the room. Neil, are you entering as well? Um, I will move towards the door, but I'm not gonna enter it. Um so I'll be like just outside of the room. Okay. So Magnar and uh, Oscar, you enter the room, uh, and as you're kind of walking in, you notice that yeah, there's like there's like piles of decomposed corpses and stuff with spores and whatnot on them. And Oscar, you step forward and one of the goblin corpses lifts its hand up and wraps itself around Jesus. your around your ankle. Uh, yeah. And Made I need friend. everybody to roll for initiative. Yeah. Perfect. Yep, 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 yep. Oh, everyone's automatically a friend. Just saying. Yay! Friendship! There, if you try hard enough. 
Uh, I have a 23. I roll a natural 20. Wow. And I'm going to be right back. Okay. So, Tully, you've got a 23. Uh, what do you got, Magnar? 16. 16. Uh, Neo? A 12. A 12. And Oscar? 9. A 9. Hey. All right. Sex number. Uh, That's okay. What that is, yeah. There we go. The dealio is up, and so the chat can see. Bloop! There's the initiative order that's coming on in. So, uh, Tully. Uh, Tully has two P, I think. Uh, yeah. S- skip him. Get him later. All right. He rolled the highest in the thing and had to go to the bathroom. So Tully. Looks like he's reading an yeah. arrow. Yeah, Tully sees this uh, and is too scared to act. So he uh, he goes Still shrieking. He goes corpses blah! and uh, uh, and is is too afraid. But Magnar, you are you are battle hardened. You I mean you you fought once or twice before. Uh, so you see this uh, oh. Tully. You spent your turn getting scared. Oh. Yeah, uh, sorry. Uh, Magnar, uh, you see this this giant mushroom wiggling and wobbling, and you see one of the corpses that's on the ground grab Oscar's foot, and it's a goblin corpse. Guys, uh-huh. my foot or Magnar's foot? Magnar, it grabbed. Sorry, it grabbed Oscar's foot. And Magnar, okay. you're you're the one seeing this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's happening just inside the door. Whereas I assume the big mushroom, excuse me, when I assume Big Daddy Mushroom is further into the room. Yeah, I would say uh, it's a good fifteen feet ahead of you. Okay, um, I will because uh, I already have my Warhammer out. Yeah, um, I will swing at. I don't know D&D. If I swing at the hand that's grabbing Oscar to free him, am mm-hmm. I like maybe gonna accidentally just break his just, foot? Just hit it in the head. Well, just yeah. Swing. I mean, you could, uh, yeah. Like you can aim for the hand, but I would say you could also just aim for the thing. Oh, it's, it's a whole goblin. I it's it a whole no. It, it's a whole goblin corpse reaching. Oh, I'll aim for the head then. Absolutely. All right. Uh, it's a nineteen. You absolutely hit this goblin. Excellent. Uh, then I take this one. Mm-hmm. Uh, that is a 13. Uh, okay. So you clamp on down onto this goblin, uh, and s- smash its head open. Uh, and, uh, the goblin, uh, ceases to move and just, like, releases Oscar's foot. Nice. I spit on the corpse afterwards. Wow. <laughs> Painful. Uh, all right. So Oscar... Uh, you've been freed from the grasp of this uh, of this of this goblin. Hell yeah! Um, so uh, yeah, so you see this happen. Uh, unbeknownst to you, though, bloop! A rat comes out from the pile of corpses with a bunch of uh, fungus on it, no. and leaps out and attempts to uh, catch Magnar unaware, uh, and uh, and leaps out. And do 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 do. What is uh? Oh, the, the, that hits you. It's a twenty-four. Uh, <laughs> um, and yeah, uh, Magnar, you take three points of damage as it gnaws at your ankle a little bit while you're you know trying to save your buddy here. Gross. Uh, Giants, giant rats are gross. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> yeah, I'm out. This is yeah. this is it. <laughs> That's too much. Are they uh, like the giant giant rats in the Princess Bride in the fire swamp? Yeah. Oh yeah. With like with like Gross. spores and stuff inside of them. Gross. Uh, Neo, it's your turn. So currently, you see that there is this rat attacking Magnar, and the giant fungus is doing a fungus dance in the middle. Okay, I'm gonna make um, an assumption that the fungus is what's controlling them. So I'm gonna ignore the rat and go for the giant mushroom. Okay. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is use. Um, ray of frost okay uh, on the giant mushroom um this is a new spell i gave her so i'm just making sure that i'm doing it right heck yeah no worries just i'm also checking to see if the fungus is what the kit if it's got a vulnerability to ice cold yeah, it'll be cold, cold. okay damage. all right aren't plant types weak to ice they are in Pokemon, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Does a game of rain. does a fourteen hit it? So you're making a dexterity attack with it? Is that kind of the idea? Yeah. 
Uh, yes, it does. It does hit it. It's a it's a big old fungus. Okay, so I mean, then, um, so what it says is that. Uh, so it says, um, uh, on hit, it'll take, uh, on hit, it takes 1d8 of cold damage and speed is reduced by 10 feet. Okay. I don't think it moves. It does not, it, it, as far as you can see, it will not get up and walk towards you. So how much damage does it take? It takes there. six, six cold damage. Okay. Uh, so the, the giant fungus takes six damage. Uh, can you... reduce your move speed if you have no move speed. <laughs> <laughs> so the mushroom jiggles around and it's like. <laughs> it, it made a noise? It, it does. It does Ugh. make a bit of a noise. like, But not not like human. It's more like. <laughs> I don't like that. Uh, and yeah, it jiggles around a bit. Well, very, not... very not down with it. Uh, does, it noise? does it have a soul? Please don't ask those questions. <laughs> Oscar, please. <laughs> so, I'm just wondering. Uh, also, because, uh, so you're not in the room, right, Neo? You guys are, like, pot shot it from outside? Neoma mm -hmm. is standing outside the door, yeah. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> sorry, I just, somebody in chat said, no, it has a soil. I uh, hate you. Uh, so, Thanks, I hate it. another giant rat pops out of the corpse pile, uh, and leaps at Oscar this time. Yeah, I block. Uh, it gets... How did I, sorry, I should actually just be using my program. It makes my life so much easier. Uh, what is your AC? 16. All right, so the the rat jumps out and attempts to gnaw you, uh, but you block. You you do ah. indeed block. You go, ha-ha, <laughs> yeah. and you, and you well, shoot it like, away. If it's, like, if it's like jumping out of a course pile, like it's at my ankles, right? Yeah. So I just like slam my shield down as like a wall. Right. Like, oh, fuck. <laughs> Ouch. <laughs> ah, my nose. <laughs> All right, uh, so Oscar, you are out. Hell yeah. Uh, so I just saw a rat bite Magnar, hey? Yeah, and there's also one that's attacking you. Yeah, well, I'm going to smack the rat that's that bit Magnar. Okay. You guys They're are, like, right beside each other. Right um, yeah, and then I might decide to use my martial, my war domain thing. But, oh, okay. Tell uh, me about this. I'm excited. I did. I used it last time. It's the, you get an extra Right, you get a bonus roll. attack, yeah. Yeah. Um, okay, so uh, the first roll is a 21. Okay, that that definitely hits. That definitely hits. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it takes uh, nine points of damage from okay. the big warhammer. Nice. So you slam warhammer on brothers. Yeah, hey. the warhammer brothers. <laughs> <laughs> so you smash your hammer on down. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you just you crush the ding dang thing like the oh. rat just goes, and the rat gets crushed underneath oh, your hammer. Sick. I guess oh, I'll... you got rat juice on me. Uh, gross. I'm not going to use my extra attack right now. For sure. Uh, yeah. I guess, actually, uh, Magnus, what's your AC? Uh, Sixteen, because I'm not using my shield. Magnar. I get a, I get Magnar, Magnus. Ma Magnus Magnar. was your character from our D and D session at uh, Magic Fest Seattle. Right. <laughs> no, it was Manus. Manus, right? right sorry. Yeah. Okay, we, we play a lot of D and D. Okay, just D &D. just recently, uh, I'm gonna use. I have a bonus action, correct? Uh yeah. Okay, I'm yeah. gonna use my bonus action to cast Shield of Faith on Magnar. Okay. So you get an extra two AC. Nice. Hell so that yeah. that puts fun that puts Magnar at eighteen. Wow. We're up to ten What's minutes. The... Ten minutes, okay. Mm -hmm. A shimmering field appears and surrounds a creature of your choice within range. Okay. I cool. just yeah. start laughing because I'm glowing like a god. <laughs> well, okay, let's pump the brakes, Doctor Doom. Jesus, I just giving you a little bit extra AC. Hmm. <laughs> he lets out a long villainous laugh. <laughs> and I writes down, "Never again." <laughs> uh, all right, so that's your turn. Yeah, great. So as you do this, uh, out of the corpse pile, another goblin appears. Oh God damn it! Uh, this place is lousy with them. Yeah, and uh, you know these 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 corpses, as you can kind of see them, uh, have all, all of these have these same spores growing on them, mm -hmm. uh, and so the goblin uh, reaches up uh, and attempts to with its 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 clawy fingers slice at uh, at Oscar, yeah, uh, and uh, misses it, it whiffs. Just Hell barely, yeah, like it's, brother. It, it, it's very slow and shambly. You're like, no, like you stay, you kind of step yeah, like, away. You're like, gross. I just like do the, 
Yeah, like gross. <laughs> gross. <laughs> Please stop touching me. Yeah. Uh yeah, so you so you dodge it. Okay. Then you hear another groan from the center of the room. Uh-huh. Uh and the giant fungus in the middle goes Okay, stop. I hate this. I hate everything about this. Uh, a and a root Fling. There's a small problem here. That says giant violent fungus, not big daddy mushroom. Oh, oh you do need to fix that. Uh, I petition to change it to big father mushroom. Hold on. Big one... daddy mushroom. Hold on. I, I don't know Orange if I can. Father finger the father. <laughs> okay, can I call it? I, I can't change the name, but I can go BDM on it and, add a, and add a tag like a... to it. Does that, Brian... does that, does that work for you? Yeah, yeah, Brian David Marshall. Yeah, is Brian, Brian, yeah we're beating Marshall. up Brian David Marshall. Oh, I was going to go completely Ugh. different. Are you into BDM, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, on that note, a out off, off of the ground, this large root-like tentacle sort of rises from like the uh, a corpse pile and comes on down and whips out at Magnar. Uh, and Magnar... <laughs> Magnar, uh, you take... Two it and a crit. Yeah, it got a natural twenty, but I'm not rolling a crit on you because uh, this attack is. Uh, it deals two necrotic damage to you. What does that mean? Uh, so uh, it's not going to continue to deal damage to you, but what it does is, as this root hits you, uh, I'm going to say, kind of hits you on like the your your side. Um, it wears away. Uh, and it kind of corrodes through your armor, and a little bit of your skin is exposed as, as it like seats in and, and kind of bubbles. Like it doesn't the, the the root itself doesn't hit your actual skin, but the bubbling heat of the the necro like necrotic uh, root hitting your armor uh, singes your skin a little bit. In other words, you're gonna smell worse than you did before. Yeah. Uh gross. Hey, uh, and then I didn't Os- think you smelled that bad. Oscar. Uh another root comes out and it does the same to you on your leg for one damage. Okie dokie. Uh, so Magnar, you took two. Mm-hmm. And Oscar, you took one. There I took go. one damage. Yikes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's uh, that's that's not great. Uh, all right. So, Tully, it is your turn. You see, you, you've been freaking out a little bit, but you, you, saw, you see your friends are in danger. I have a moment of focus and I'm like, wait, I have to help. And I pull out my bow and arrow and I shoot at uh, one of the tentacles that hit Magnar or, yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. Yeah. I roll a 17 to hit. Okay. You absolutely hit the fungus. Uh, Okay. Bow does D8 plus my modifier. So I hit it for 10. Okay. So you shoot it right in the tentacle and the tentacle flails out uh, and you hear. Still don't like it. Uh... And uh, yeah, and the, tent- and the tentacle shimmies and shakes and falls to the ground. What? The tentacle. Oh, I thought ground. I was like, I landed a killing blow. No, 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 no. Uh, okay. Yeah, there you go. Anything else? I, uh, I mean, I, I, I shouted my shonen attack and I fired an arrow. I mean, I can't think of much else I'd want to do in a cool. turn. Okay. Yeah. I, I don't know. You can move and all that kind of jazz. That's why I'm asking you to have more things. Oh no, no, I'm on the other side of the spear pit. This is this is where I'm safe. I'm okay. in the perfect sniping position right now. All right. They're far away. There's a spike pit in front of me. It's brilliant. All right, uh, Magnar, it's your turn. Okay. So uh, I have a goblin that came up near me, right, and uh, yes. swiped at me. Yeah. Um, which I guess if I run for the giant fungus, then he's going to swipe me too. So I'm going to attack the goblin. Okay. Get him. That is a 23. You hit the goblin. <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, and then that is an eight for damage. Uh, all right. So you swing your mighty war hammer and you smash this goblin. Uh, and it's, it's, it's very brittle body just collapses. Nice. All right. Hey, anything uh, else? Um, I'm going to push up to the fungus. I think I'm going to take the fight there. Sure. Okay. So you do have a giant. You have uh, there is one rat left. It is attacking um, Oscar, but if it sees you kind of turn, it'll probably make an attack of opportunity. So you do have instead of making your full movement towards it, you can disengage. 
towards it if you'd like. Oh, I will, I will do the disengage, yeah. Cool. Okay, so you disengage. I'll say it puts you within 10 feet of the, the, the mushroom. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Okay. So, yeah, so you do that. The rat is com- sees, sees kind of, you know, Magnar shimmy shake away, but it's still very much focused on Oscar. Uh, and it, it rolls a 15, which I don't believe hits you, Oscar. You got 16, right? Yeah. Uh, so it, it's still like it's bashing its body against your shield and you're, you're holding it at bay. Yeah. Uh, Neoma, it is your turn. Okay, I think I'm going to uh, keep going at the big old, the 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 big daddy mushroom. Sure. Right. Yeah, the BDM. Uh, uh, I'm actually just I'm gonna use ray of frost again at it. Sure. This yeah, is the apologies. Okay. I rolled a natural twenty to hit. All right. Whoa. I I don't know what that does, <laughs> or if it even matters. I don't know if spells can crit. I have um, no idea. I'm pretty sure anything that rolls damage can crit. Yeah, so you roll an extra dice for the attack's damage against the target. Yeah, okay. Okay. Well, that's a big old two of damage. Uh, so you scroll, you get to roll extra dice for the attack's damage against the target. Yeah, okay. I rolled two ones. Yeah, that's unfortunate. All right. Mm-hmm. That's, that, uh, that is unfortunate. I, so, next, I'll try to do better next time. All right, you 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 give it a a, a bit of a chill, and the mushroom goes. Mm. Can and, you give some like um um lines like everybody freeze or, or something? No, absolutely Please. not. <laughs> <laughs> like Arnold Schwarzenegger. As... I, I'm picturing oh, you oh, saying God. you saying yeah. that like as a character, like but like the equivalent of like I'm sure there's some sort of tale of like a, oh. a Batman, like a wizard totally that used to tell puns. Says that to me, yeah. and I go, what ice? Yeah, what, what I is? Go, absolutely not. What is the name of this ice wizard that is in comic sort of lore in in this time? The Lord of Freeze. Okay, so the Lord of so you're like, can you can you say like a cool pun like the Lord of Freeze when you yeah. do that? I love the stories of the Lord of Freeze, Neoma. Absolutely. <laughs> Have like not. a cool catch line. Absolutely not. Oh, all right, uh, Oscar, it's your turn. Cool. Uh, all right, so Magnus is pieced out. Oh, hi, Lord Freeze. Sorry. Well, okay. Are you going to from now on? Uh, okay, so I still have a rat near me? Uh, yes. Right, correct. All right, I'm going to smack at a rat. Smack uh, that rat. Well, that's a really good roll. Uh, I got a 23. You got it. And it takes uh, three points of damage. <laughs> All right. So the what rat... <laughs> Yeah, the rat the rat takes uh, takes a swing from your hammer and you get it kind of get right like in, in in its side and you is see it... the rat you see the rat go Kee! and like and like squeak a little bit but Dude. like but it's still it's still okay it's still uh, okay. do I want to use my thingy uh, I don't really don't want to get bit by this rat I'm gonna use my war domain okay yeah. right. go for it to get an extra attack so I'm like uh, yeah I guess for Tempest. Like he just like he's yeah, like, for Tem- <laughs> he's like for Tempest, whack. <laughs> uh, that's not as good. Uh, is a thirteen hit? Uh, a thirteen does indeed hit. Yes. Oh, okay, cool. Uh, another three points of damage. <laughs> Two ones, baby. Let's go. So the rat takes another swing, and it is like Meh. it like was not expecting to get hit twice. And it is it is limping, but it is still it is still okay. All right. The fungus, the BDM, goes <laughs> and uh, its its other tentacle kind of goes out uh, and seeing and the tentacle lashes at Oscar because it, you 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 seem to be attacking one of its uh, one of its offspring. Um, mm-hmm. And you just barely, like, nimbly sort of Ooh. dodge it as you see it coming your way. Oh, holy. But then you hear another... And the the mushroom seems to deflate. Oh, that's bad. Uh, a oh, little Lord, bit. And suddenly <laughs> a shower of, like, spores shoot out from it. And Oscar and Magnar, I need you both to make dexterity saves. Uh-oh. 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 Oh, Lord, he coming. <laughs> Gross. I got a six. I'm dead. 
20. It was nice, it was nice knowing you all. All right, Can't Oscar. So through uh, Magnar, you managed to kind of like, I guess, uh, maybe, do you have like a cloak or anything like that? Uh, or a backpack? I, have a beard that I stuffed my beard in my mouth. I was going to say, okay. what about a very thick dwarven beard? Okay, so you, you put your beard in your mouth. It's like a mess. So, Oscar, you're kind of so busy trying to dodge this uh, root that a uh, shower of spores kind of comes in and you end up inhaling them a little bit and you cough and you wheeze uh, and you take three points of damage. Yikes. Oh, okay. Good thing you saw that heal. Yeah, for real. Uh, I haven't used any spells yet. All right, uh, Tully, it is your turn. You're like, oh no, uh, does it go oh. back to normal after deflates, or is it now like super deflated and just yeah. lying there like that was its final attack? Uh, I would also like to mention uh, yeah. that the room now is all around you on fire. Good. Oh, the, good. The fire from Magnar's uh, fire breath has spread throughout the room. Oh yeah, I did forget about that. <laughs> Uh, I, okay. J mm -hmm. I I'm going to attack the mushroom again. The weirdly deflated, possibly on fire mushroom. Uh, I roll a 21 to hit. Uh, yes, you hit the mushroom. Uh, I roll nine damage. Jesus. Okay. Uh, you're shooting arrows at it, I assume, yeah? yeah? Yeah, yeah, This is the second arrow. So I don't know if piercing damage is relevant to, uh, the, the mushroom type here. No, you are fine. It, or, okay. it, it, it's still doing its thing. Uh, so yeah, you shoot an arrow and the mushroom goes, and, but it's still, it's still, it's still alive and kicking. Uh, Magnar, it is your turn. You've got your okay. beard in your mouth. Okay. Uh, I want to turn around, uh, wink at Oscar and then huck one of my hand axes at the rat that just bit him. Ah, okay. I like the turn and wink. Yeah, that's, that's part of it. Um, Very cute. They're a very cute couple. So you're going to make a dex attack. Yes. Yep. Ha. Uh, that's a 14. Uh, you do hit the rat. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Nice. Uh, I would say you you don't need to roll unless you really want to. It has one hit point. No, hang on. Let's just make sure. Oh, yeah. Can you okay. possibly roll less than one damage? Yeah. That's a six. So I want to split it right in two. Okay, oh. so you you whiff the you you you, you yeet the axe uh, and it sails and like Oscar's like fighting it and is like why won't you die rat and then poof, it just like gets like split into as an axe kind of sails right on through it and uh, yeah sick o Oscar do you do anything upon seeing this uh, I'll do that you know that kid at the computer the thumbs up. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I turned to like, you're like this, but you're yeah. also, but also you just like ingested a bunch of sports and you're like, <laughs> <laughs> I want to do like a really nice, like Colgate commercial smile, but my mouth is still stuffed with beard. <laughs> yeah. That's sick. All right. Okay. Uh, great. So the rat, the rat. Yes, it, it is. It is absolutely dead. Uh, Neoma, it is your turn. Oh, uh, actually, sorry. As a follow up, do I, should I move? Am I oh, able to yeah. move into combat with yes. the? You absolutely the can move like right up yeah. to it if you'd like. Yeah, I'll do that. Cool. Okay. As a free action, I'm hoping that this is what this is. I would like to yell out, "Do you want me to do something about the fire?" And I yell that to Oscar and Magnar. Probably. <laughs> yeah. Yep. That sounds okay. great. So. Oh, no, I said. Yep. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was great. So we're going to go with that. So this is a DM can I question. Okay. Um, I would like to use the shape water cantrip. Yeah. But what I would like to do is uh, ask permission to take any and all water available from canteens and in the area around us, uh, in, in the walls, in any sort of things, that water where I would know water would come from and create a light rain in the room. Uh, not just to take to away minimize. your thunder, but I can actually legitimately create water. Like okay, 10 well, gallons of water. Well, <laughs> tell me that yeah. next time. If I can just make the water. Round, well, I'd like to keep my water. Okay, so here's the That's thing. important. <laughs> Oscar, Oscar, that it is your turn next. Yeah. So what I will say is if you both decide to combine, use your turn, you, Oscar and Neoma, you can combo up and do like some sort of water bending kind of thing to attempt to put out all the fire in the room. 
Well, I mean, the spell legitimately says, yeah, I create up to 10 gallons of clean water within range. Okay. Which is within 30 feet. Um, alternatively, alternatively, the water falls in rain in a 30 foot cube, okay, extinguishing so exposed flames in the area. So, so words, we can just do it. I don't have to do it. You don't have to do it, which is I'm saying we don't have to waste our water that we need to live <laughs> in our canteens. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But you can do whatever you want. That smells enough to just blanket the room and do it. Otherwise, that's, we have a water. No, that's fine. Can... I didn't know that you could do that. And that's a that's level fine. one spell rather than a cantrip too. Yeah, it's a level one spell. Okay. okay. All right. So all right. Okay. So Oscar's got the fire. Well, how situation. dangerous is the fighter fire? Like, how do I? As we me, as a, well, it is. This is why, yeah. This is why I asked you. Do yeah. you want me to do something? So your answer should have been no. I can deal with it. Yeah. Okay. So that's it's like full. So yeah. So the the fire is filling the room. I'll say in one more round, it's the danger zone now. Oh. Okay. So All Oscar's right. response should have been, "No, and it's okay. No, I got it." Yeah. All right. So and Nia, will, what would you like to do? I will attack the mushroom with okay. more ice coldness. Yeah. I will say. I'll say you could chalk it up to being. You're like, "Do you need any help?" And Oscar's like, "Mushroom," and he's like coughing up a lung or whatever. And you're like, "I'm sure you've got it." <laughs> he's more like. <laughs> Back to yeah, barfing, but like thumbs up kind of a thing. <laughs> what did you get, uh, Neo? 19 to hit. You absolutely hit the mushroom, yeah. It takes uh, six cold damage. All right. Uh, so the mushroom gets a chilly willy, and uh, it goes... Oh, it's a foghorn now. Um, but uh, <laughs> it's still going, but th this mushroom seems like it's had better days. Uh, anything else you'd like to do, Neo? Not at all. Okay. Oscar. Uh, yeah, fire's getting out of control, I guess. Uh, uh, I'm going to cast uh, Create Water. I'm okay. Do it in, I guess in a 30-foot cube. Sure. Or whatever it would... How big the room is. So how does this how do, how do you how does this happen? I want you I want you to paint me a word picture of how you go it about just doing this. falls. I was like, hey, uh, fuck, Tempest. Shh. Little help. <laughs> <laughs> and uh yeah i'm just gonna try to like create water i guess and tempest is like sitting up in his and you said it creates know, 10 gallons of water as rain it can fall as rain okay so it could just yeah. be like Psh. yeah oh yeah no i'm not i'm not suddenly be like so just like, like everybody is yeah full of water everyone's in a cube yeah yeah uh okay so it the the rain falls down from the yeah. from the roof and it does after some time extinguish the flames however yeah. from that uh I will say between the rain and the fire and the spores, the room is now foggy. Like it is hard to see shit no. up in this room quite a bit. How am I supposed to fire arrows in? But the fire yeah. is extinguished. With the same spell, I can destroy fog. <laughs> <laughs> but Would you like that to happen? Action. I will say you can make that happen. No, because you, you have to choose. Oh, okay. Either create water or destroy water. It's okay. Like create or destroy water. All right. But uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, so you're you're fine. Uh, all right, anything else you'd like to do for your turn, Oscar? That's all I can do. Yeah. All right, the mushroom now see like the fire is gone, so it's like less in pain. Um, but you, it, it it sees that Magnar sort of moved in its range, and it just sort of shimmies its roots around and attempts to sort of smack uh, Magnus or uh, Magnar. Sorry, I'm, now I'm saying it. Uh, and, uh, Magnar definitely manages to, uh, to dodge out of the way and not kind of get entangled up in this roots. Uh, Tully, it is your turn. It is, you have a very hard time seeing the mushroom. I will now, say, what does that mean? so I'll say you can absolutely still attack it. Mm -hmm. Um, and because it's a stationary object, it hasn't moved and you don't need to change much about it. You do not have to, uh, Normally, I would say you would not have to make a disadvantage roll. However, because Magnar is also kind of up and right beside it, mm -hmm. I'm going to say you have to roll with disadvantage on this one. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to channel all of my hopes and aspirations of being the next great adventurer. And there's going to be like an anime training montage of like all the times I've prepared just for this moment. Yeah. My my one roll is a seven. Yeah. And then my other roll yeah. is a six. Alright. Mm. So you fire off an arrow. With uh, all the hopes in it. 
so proud of you. Um, and it, it's it's not necessarily that you miss as much as you just don't put enough oomph behind it. And Magnar, you from behind you, you just because you're wearing uh, is it chain mail or scale mail? What are you wearing? Uh, I'm wearing chainmail. Yeah, chainmail. Chainmail. Okay, so you just kind of feel like a uh, behind, like it doesn't deal any damage, but something hit you behind, uh, and and uh, and it, it doesn't deal damage. It just felt uncomfortable. What'd you say, Tully? Watch out for those tentacles. <laughs> uh huh. All right. Uh, anything else you'd like to do? Uh, ask myself how I missed. I'm supposed to be the world's next greatest adventurer. It's not supposed to happen like that. Okay. Can I look over my shoulder real quick and just like be like, "You get it next time." Yeah, and behind <laughs> you, behind you, you hear you feel just like a little bit, pat, a little uh, small hand pat you on the back. And goes, "Me both thought you did okay." <laughs> Power okay. Ah, you did okay, kid. Yeah. Meepo just said you tried. <laughs> <laughs> you, you tried. Uh, all right, Magnar, it is your turn. All right, uh, it's hammer time for the big daddy mushroom. Yeah, you got it. Uh, that's a seventeen. No, uh, sorry, you... that's fifteen. Good. You hit it. You hit it. You're good. It was also still, still seventeen. Um, okay. Math is hard. Um, that is a six. Okay. Uh, so you smash into the mushroom, and uh, it like he like you you pierce through it like into the into its mush pulpy mushroomy uh vibe. Uh, and you're a and like it's shaking and shaking, but it's like and it starts to kind of like lean over a little bit over top of you, and it's just sort of like st- sitting there, like breathing in and out. Call it daddy. And in and out, and yeah. Anything else you'd like to do on your turn? Uh, n- no, I think that's good. All right, uh, Neo, it is your turn. I will say. You are probably used to stormy, foggy weather like this. Oh, so you know how to deal with it. I will not give you disadvantage if you want to make a ranged attack against the mushroom. Okay. Yeah. I, that's, thank you. That's mm-hmm. awesome. Yeah. Cause I, I do, I, I'm going to. Yeah. You've seen this kind of stuff on the seas for sure. For sure. Yeah. Ooh, I got a 20. All right. Yeah. Roll it up. Like natural 20? Dang. Natural 20. I got a two. <laughs> At a seven. Okay, that's okay. not bad. All right, so you shoot this. Uh, I it's, it's like a it's like a is it a ball or I, I guess I never asked. Uh, it's it's a, a ray. So it's a ray of bright blue and white light that comes out of my hands. Okay, so this ray shoots out from your hands uh, and extends all the way to to the mushroom, uh, to to the big daddy mushroom, uh, and it just starts coating the 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 whole mushroom in ice. And ice and ice until it's like completely encased. And then, and then, I, then can I <laughs> can yeah. I look at Tully and go, You want a cool tagline? Who's your daddy now? And then as you say that the mushroom collapses and shatters in on itself, uh, and is no more. Damn. Hooray. Hooray, we did it. Uh We're all- yeah, the mushroom the mushroom has fallen. So now there is this room that is all burnt up. There's fog and and rain and all that kind of jazz around you. Question, does yeah. it smell better after the fire? Yeah. I'm going to say yeah, especially with like the rain, the fire and the rain to wash it away a little bit. Yeah. It smells a little bit better. But everything smells like you know, um, like a, a a barbecue after like you've got like all the crap like off of it or whatnot. That's kind of the smell that you smell. Mm-hmm. Um, Oscar and um, Magnar. Yeah, yeah. I, I Magnar like... takes his beard out of his mouth and then flicks his hair back like uh, an Instagram model. So it does that cool curve that you mm-hmm. do in the sun. It's got all the rain in it too, so it like whips yeah. or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Oscar and Magnar. Um, I need you to make a perception check for me. Ooh. Uh, That's eight. a five ball. Yeah, I got an eight. An eight? I got a five. Yeah. A five. All right. Uh, so you look around you, and you see that a lot of the room has all the fungus and whatnot has been burnt away and stuff. Mm-hmm. And you see a lot of cracks and whatnot in the walls. 
And in the far corner of one of the rooms, you see a hole about maybe five feet by five feet, um, enough to kind of like slip in. That is that is on the south facing wall that appears to sort of head south. Five feet by five feet is about the size of Magnar. Yeah. It's like perfect dwarf proportion. Hey, it's a dwarf shaped cube. <laughs> this hole was made for you, Magnar. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not a Minecraft block. Like, that's, I'm. <laughs> anyway. And with that, Meepo sort of like comes in the room and, uh, and also sees it and goes, This, this hole, this may, might, might lead in direction of, of the goblins. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe we can use it to get even backdoor, backdoor entrance. And with uh, that, mm. I'm going to call the session to a close. Uh, 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 not getting in that hole. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, just before we do, do we, is there anything to loot? Because I'm very about that. Are they just all like all mushroomed up? Uh, yes. You know what? Let's, let's, let's let you loot. Uh, there is actually a fair amount of stuff up in here. Um, are there also perception checks, or, or do we just find it? I'm going to say you guys are able to find it. Nice. Uh, okay. So we'll figure out how to split this. But right. um, among the, pro the poking and prodding of the corpses and stuff, you find about 68 gold pieces. Okay. Uh, you find three gemstones and yeah. a backpack in which has a potion of healing. Hmm. And a pouch that has another seventeen gold pieces, and on oh. one of the ro and uh, let's let's say Magnar, I want you to do a perception check for me. Mm -hmm. Roll big, roll big, roll big! Come on, big loot money. <laughs> perception seven. That's all you find. No, Magnar. Oh. Damn. No. It's totally going to be a sweet, small boy sized magical armor. <laughs> that's, oh, a that weird sense. that's a weird <laughs> fucking sense. <laughs> ah, where's my small boy sized armor? <laughs> so, uh, that is going to wrap it up for today. Uh, for this for this session of the Moonlighters. Mm -hmm. I, I hope you all uh, had fun. Um, we will be back uh next next thursday so that will be the do, 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 the 11th july 11th is our next scheduled session for this um and uh before we go i would love to have my amazing amazing crew uh say you know a little bit about themselves and where you can find their things because they are all terrific terrific streamers so tq actually let's do it let's do it from the the from the back to the front Funko, where can folks find you? Uh, you can catch me over at twitch.tv slash el underscore Funko. Uh, I'm not streaming today, but I'll be back tomorrow from 8 p.m. Pacific. Uh, probably playing PUBG because I'm real horned up for that right now. Nice. Uh, Serge. Hi, friends. Uh, find me over at twitch.tv slash Serge Yeager, playing Minecraft and all kinds of fun stuff. You can also find myself, Ben, and Adam all at the Core 2020 pre-release over at uh, twitch.tv slash learning when you run tomorrow. So if you like new magic cards, uh, come check that out. Yeah, that starts tomorrow. At, so there, I guess worth noting, there is no multi-pals <laughs> tomorrow. Uh, and uh, yeah, it, it starts at 10 o'clock. Uh, and uh, yeah, we're going to be pre-pre-releasing the new magic set that's coming on out. Yo. Uh, Adam. Yo, my name is Adam. Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash cbats, S-C-A-B-A-T-S. Uh, I play different stuff i've been playing dead cells uh i am also i play a lot of dauntless um which i am also a partner for and yeah make sure you watch the pre-release tomorrow all right and tq i'm tq you can find me at twitch.tv slash sly tq and i play a lot of simulation games so sim stardew uh, i also really enjoy sea of thieves and overwatch uh, but i'm on a stardew kick right now yeah, well, you're on a Stardew eSports team now, aren't you? Yeah, yeah that's pretty sweet. <laughs> that's really exciting. So uh, I will be uh, playing more games tomorrow uh, around 3 p.m. Pacific on my channel. That's, <laughs> that's my next day. Yeah. 
and I suppose I should talk about myself. I mean, you're you're all here, but maybe you're you're from another channel, and this is your first time coming on in. Uh, I am Benjineering. This is my channel, um, and uh, I do all kinds of stuff: uh, Magic the Gathering, uh, Pokemon. I'm just a variety streamer, but I do. I, lately, I've been doing a lot of like group streams and and hanging out and stuff. I really like doing stuff with my streaming friends because these are all amazing humans that have a lot of talent and i'm really really uh, stoked that i'm friends with them and can do stuff like this um i want to uh i'll give a big thanks to all the subs and folks who gave bits after but for those of you who are watching the youtube this is usually the uh the nice spot where i can make a nice uh a, a, a cut off and, and and say goodbye so i will do that now thank you everybody i hope you all have just the loveliest of lovely nights and we will see you on our next session all right? All right. Bye. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. <laughs>